Welcome back to the Hearthstone Global Games. While we leave Sweden to celebrate, we're going to move swiftly on to the next series, uh, which is a pretty exciting one, actually. Yeah, Turkey and uh, South Korea. An interesting start for both teams. Um, yep. I think South Korea will fancy their chances in this one, but... Turkey have Fujitora, who's been making rather a name for himself over the last 12 months. And, and this is the reason that I find this game very exciting. Obviously, I mean, South Korea in itself, great team, awesome. But uh, Turkey just seem very interesting to me. Their attitude about everything, I think they're going to be fascinating to watch throughout this tournament. Yeah, I agree entirely. Let's have a look at those teams right now. And there we go. Fujitora is the big name on Turkey. He's not the anchor, though. Thunder Up is the anchor. Right. And South Korea, this team is just a monster. Uh, Dat Rivia is picking up 54 points in the first season. Second and place, Thailand, I believe. Bangkok, HCC Bangkok. Indeed, he was. And Stilo also picking up points after all. He's got 87 already for last call. And he was top four in, in Seoul recently, so. That's um, going well. And then we're not even talking about surrender as we have a look at the, the countries. Oh, Korea. just look. I miss South Korea so much, Lorinda. You've been there a lot of times now. I've right? been there quite a few times since the Hearthstone Global Games wrapped up last year. Cast a few tournaments over there. And I just love the place. And that's that's how I know Suni as well. And we together cast the G-Star Hearthstone Super Fight in which he won beating Pavel in the Grand Finals. Now, that's an accolade. Yeah, did you pick up uh, much of the South Korean casters? <laughs> they enjoy their Hearthstone. We, should we be should we be casting this in the style of the South Korean casters? I don't. I think I'm probably, probably not. I don't think the world is ready for me casting in the style <laughs> of South Korean casters just yet. But still, um, lots of good things to say about South Korea. And like you said, Turkey Fujitora done some incredible things. WSG winner. Uh, I mean, that's a big prize pool that he took away there. But it's not enough for him. Fujitora's back, ready to compete in some more Hearthstone, and they're very confident between them. Yeah, confidence bordering on um, aggressive Arrogant. at times. Arrogance with <laughs> Fuji. I mean, he started up a bit of a meme fight with Luca going into WSG. Luca being the super nice guy that he is, took it all in good stead. And then it all went a little bit sour at times, but Fuji ended up winning that. They ended up playing in the final. The feud was set before the draw was even done. Now, production um, just kindly reminded us that South Korea is, of course, Raven's pick, or one of Raven's oh, yeah. two picks, to win the tournament. And... Uh, well, one of the thing, reasons I'm really looking forward to today, actually, is because I believe every series that we are casting has a caster pick in it. So uh, we've all got some stake in this. Yeah, we have. We have a stake in Hearthstone being amazing as well. Just finishing that point about Fuji, I want to know, he's okay with that solo stuff, but can, will he be able to actually work with a team? Like he, he, he will possibly want to just solo carry everything, which could end up to some communications issues for Turkey. It all depends how he goes about it. Let's take a look at the picks and bans and get into this series. Uh, there you go. Uh, Druid's banned straight up, straight away, apparently. It's interesting. That's not what we'd been that to believe. But however, looking at the list we have on the screen, uh, both Druids have been taken down. Uh, yeah, there's definitely something wrong there because Druid's on there twice, so on the right-hand side. Okay, yeah, we will uh, we'll get that one. But the information we have, but... um, which is probably correct, is that um, Turkey uh, aren't going to get to play their Druid, but South Korea are. It's almost an exact mirror match. All nine decks are the same archetype, apart from Cube, Warlock, and Even Warlock. It's there was there was one more I spotted as well. I believe okay. one of the two. Yeah, uh, Turkey actually bringing Quest Priest. Oh, I'd overlooked that. So yeah, completely the out. Control of Priest <laughs> is just how I went with the archetypes. Sure, um, but but overall they're very very yeah. similar. Neither team taking much of a risk in this first week. Right. Yeah. Which is why again the information that we had, which will hopefully be presented to you in a moment, uh, our bands were very different. There we go. That's, there we go. That's exactly what we we're expecting to like see it. now. With Turkey ending up having to play um, their Paladin into this this lineup of things that beat Paladin, basically. Yeah, and, and this is what I wanted to say about how, like, although they're bringing almost identical archetypes, as you said, they only have one ban in common. Both teams have banned Rogue. That's it. It's Their bans are entirely different otherwise, and that's that's just so strange. I mean, it sets the stall out right away when um, the, the, the Druid is banned on one side and the Shaman is banned on the other, because now the whole thing snowballs down. Well, we don't have to worry about Druid anymore. We can do these things, but... On the other side, hey, we've left the Druid up. What's going to happen here? They, yeah. They've left the Druid up through the second ban phase as well. 
and this one will be won or lost in a large extent in this pick band phase with them being so symmetrical. Now, just uh, finishing up your point, you were mentioning about Fujitora and communication a moment ago. I just spoke to Fujitora uh, a few moments ago. I'm trying to reach out to the players just before the game to say, you know, last minute, how are you feeling? And he said, yeah, I'm feeling confident as long as communication doesn't go wrong. And I said, well, why would you say communication goes wrong? Is, is, there, is that something that's happened before? And then he said, and I quote, Turkey only lost last year because of bad communication, but this year we do not have arena streamers on the team. There you go. It's a far more competitive season. I asked pretty much one person from every team why they're going to win this week. Unfortunately, I couldn't get anyone from South Korea to reply in nah, time. Neither. But Fujitora came up with, we want to upset the casters because they didn't pick us. <laughs> I knew he'd meme somebody. I thought, great, we get to tuck in. We get to say Fujitora doesn't like this guy. He doesn't like us. That's, that's, that's fair enough. But I, I really enjoy watching teams like this for the same reason as I, I went so hard on, on Greece last year about how much I enjoyed watching them. It's just different. They've got some quirks about them. They're shouty. Maybe Turkey are going to be argumentative. Maybe this is something that's going to just add for an extra element of the broadcast and an extra thing to enjoy watching. And it's interesting we're talking about that because it goes without saying with Korea basically being the home of esports, which is why Raven picks them so often, twice every pick, um, that they're probably going to be very well organized and very well communicated. It doesn't mean they definitely will be, but the natural assumption is they just will be because they've got so much infrastructure from other esports that they'll just have advice that they need if they need it, which I doubt this team even does, right. just to get on with it and communicate really well. We're going to take a look at the way that the classes have lined up together. Let's see. The match is coming up. Stilo versus Woven first. It's Warlock versus Shaman. You may notice, sadly, there is no Surrender participating today. He wasn't able to make it. So we've got Dak Rivius competing twice in his stead. Obviously, soon you'll be playing twice, just like Fujitora, because one player has to if it goes into the fifth game. Yeah, Rivius just another. I mean, it's just a point-earning team, and that's you know they've ended up on there because they got their points, but they're getting voted on because they're the best players in the region as well. And Korea have every, every reason to expect to go a long way in this. And Turkey, if they are going to upset the casters like they say they're going to, going to have to take down South Korea in the early stages. First game coming up, though, it's going to be Cube Warlock versus Shadowwalk Shaman. Uh, not a matchup I've seen too much of, but I don't really like the Shadowwalk Shaman too much here. Yeah, if you're going to bring Cube Warlock and then insta pick it when your Druid gets banned, then, uh, sorry, when your Shadowwalk gets banned, you're, you've got that Warlock for a reason, and right. it's just better in these matchups, I feel. I, I just feel that looking down this list, so you, you start from the middle and work your way out for what's playing against what. South Korea have just outpicked Turkey in this one. They, right. it, you're looking at that last thing. If it happens to go 2-2, two, two, Turkey have got the Paladin against the Warrior. Like, Tur that's just not a matchup you win. Turkey's bands are also just a little bit different, right? Like right. We sort of expected Druid to be one of the first bands across the board. Druid, or I guess Warlock is a second one, but Turkey have just straight in banned Shadowwalk. It does make me wonder, just looking at how that, that panned out, um, to <sighs> if Turkey maybe overthought it a little bit, maybe Ravened it a touch. Ravened it. Yeah, he, he likes to do oh, weird because things. because he goes too deep, right? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Uh, either way, we've got, <laughs> we've got a pretty bad matchup coming up for Turkey all round. Is that the sort of the conclusion we're coming to? I... Yeah, I feel that Turkey have had, yeah, just been outpicked here. I think they're going to have to get one against the head early on. If they can get a 1-0 lead, maybe take it down with this Shaman early on, then they could be in an okay spot. But that last match, they will be dreading going to game number five when it's Warrior versus Paladin. Just before we jump into the series, quick update. Uh, obviously, we have some off-stream games going on. And I've just been informed that Slovakia have beaten Israel 3-1. and Oh, that's a big result for them. I think Glazer and the Israeli team were expecting to go a long way this time. So Slovakia last year were... They started off badly, but they were try some of the teams sort of half gave up when they were 0-2, 0-3. Slovakia just kept going right to the end yep. uh, wanted to prove themselves. And they're proving themselves here if they're taking down Israel. Israel, I don't think anybody picked them, but they were one of those teams in that four or five that I mean, had every right to complain not to be up there. On the other side of things, like it, we've just seen the success of two Dusky Boys, the practice group. Mm -hmm. We've just seen the failure of one. Glacier is a Dusky Boy. So uh, that, that's just an interesting thing going on as we look at the different teams, how they've been split up and the practice groups. I think that's uh, just a fascinating thing to follow throughout this tournament. Another thing with Glazer, he, um, so he's known for bringing normal decks with weird tech. <laughs> right, yeah. And then we spoke to him in DreamHack and he's basically saying, look, he's doing better now because he's following the F2K lead of just taking the right decks. That's right. 
But as basically the leader of that team, I'd be interested to see what they brought this week. Maybe <laughs> maybe he reverted to Glazer Man. <laughs> and we're finding that Glazer Man isn't as successful now. We're, we're being... I mean, he, he basically carried that team last year. I know that they're a little bit more balanced this year because Hattel's had some time to actually mm. get into the game properly. He's a very good player, but he was tied up with, I believe, university commitments last yep. year. But this time around, I think they were a lot more happy as a unit. So, yeah, big result there for them to lose in the first round. It is, of course, Swiss. So they've got plenty more chances. If you'd like to watch the off-stream games, I believe they will be available on the Hearthstone Esports YouTube channel or mm -hmm. somewhere on the internet as well. And we will be finding some of the best clips and bringing them to you uh, at some point during the week, possibly in the Monday community show. So you're not completely missing them out. They do exist somewhere on the internet for you. Yeah, it'd be interesting to check some of those out, especially the matches like that one where it's a very big surprise. It's hard to say there's going to be many big surprises this year because there's so many great teams. Yep. I've heard Sottle discussing the, the France dilemma earlier where well, France, Sweden, Denmark, Czech Republic just yeah. left off the top 12 by the casters. But when there's more than 12 teams, it does kind of hurt when happen. you don't pick France and then five members of but this country get through to the top stop. It's like the end of every season where 40 people tweet, I should have made top 25. Yeah. Like, that's just not how numbers work. All right, game number one. Let's get this started. And again, we've got this matchup, which already isn't looking great for the Shaman. And I see a Skull of Minari in Steeler's opening hand. That's usually the card you are looking for in the lock of the cubes. And no demon to go with it, but you'll get one. And Woven is going to have his work cut out, getting this done in, in the time required. Yeah, uh, the big question is, does the Shaman have weapon removal to deal with this Skull of Minari? Obviously not an opening hand, but... Uh, he does have a news. Yeah, in the deck he does, but not in the hand. And he's going to want to be searching for that as aggressively as he can, so that he can uh, get that down on turn five. Yep, does have a news. I was looking at the wrong team, but they both have a news. They they do. it's, pre it's pretty standard in Shadowwalk yeah. Shaman nowadays, gluttonous ooze. Uh, but what does Woven do about this? Gone are the days where you can wait for your opponent to mulligan to see if they've got the skull or not. Good time to remind everyone as well, we've made references to this already. Unlike last year, this is open deck list format. The players know exactly what is in the other player's deck, and that will be a factor that they'll be thinking about throughout. Good to see the far side kept. Something that wasn't happening much along, you know, sort of when Shadowwalk first started being played. Mm -hmm. But it happens a lot more now, the idea being you're basically playing it, you're not going to do much on those turns anyway a lot of the time. So you're playing with a 29 card deck instead of a 30 card deck, more chance of finding your Shadow Walk. And of course, maybe you hit the jackpot and actually get off a combo a bit earlier. Right. In, in a combo orientated deck, card draw is, is great, right? It's just thinning out the deck straight away. No reason not to start with that. So already the decisions, do we totem or not if you are from Turkey? Dan. <sighs> No, no. I, I, uh, he's okay. decided against so it. So what is the reasoning it's for so not It's so difficult to not to just do nothing on turn two. But the, the, the point is, one of the Shadowwalk's uh, downfalls is when it fills up its hand too mm -hmm. much, fills up its board too much, you grumble back a bunch of useless totems in your hand that you don't want to play. It causes more issues than... Volcano as well could be a thing, especially against That's the true. big minions that could be in the Skull deck. And, and, and real talk, it's only really horrible for the healing totem. Because one ones can be traded into, mm -hmm. taunt totems get traded into by your opponent, spell damage at least does something, but whenever you get that healing totem as the Shadowwalk Shaman, it's entirely useless. So far sides into the, the Malatides, a pretty decent deal there, getting through this deck as quickly as possible. Obviously going to really want to rifle through this. He's going to want to rifle through it more when they see the skull. Yeah, I, I mean, this is a good start for Turkey, though. He, um, they can just go ahead and Earthshock this Doomsayer if, if he wants to keep on drawing. Yeah, it's not like you have to save the Earthshock for, for taunt minions or things. You, you don't taunt people to right. death. Uh, I mean, Fujitora does, but nobody else does. If there's a Void Lord on the board, that's great. That's three damage. If there's six Void Lords on the board, then it starts to become a problem. But... One Void Lord, not an issue. Unless he wants to save it for Possessed Lackey. That could be uh, the one thing you do want to save it for to prevent these Doom Guards from coming out. Yeah, and this is the, the fascination of, of course, these team events. It's where the communications, you can see him talking there to his teammates, is so, so important. Because they'll be going through what we just said, except there's four of them, with four differing opinions on what right. to save it for later on. Can I actually just tempo out the life drinker instead, save the Earthshock, 
Uh, and again, he's not playing this minion for the body. He did get two draws out of the Man on Tide Totem. You could definitely argue that that's enough for now. But it's also four saved mana. If he's trying to do any sort of combo stuff as quickly as possible, that's four mana he doesn't have to wait yeah. later on. Like, the Life Drink is not going to do anything. So saving that mana immediately will mean that later on maybe he's less cluttered up. Now he's looking, yeah, he's hovering over MC Tech and Zola there just for just something to do. And just to get him out of the hand yep. as well. Unfortunately, like, you know, priority one, destroy the weapon. Can't do that. So priority two is, yeah, just spend some stuff from the hand. Glacial Shard is one of the better resources, can be used on a giant or a doom guard later on. Um, but, but hey, he's got a second one, and now he's got a third. Third one. So many Glacial Shards. This also potentially allows Turkey to grumble back Zola next turn if it sticks. Oh, Dark Pact picked up there for South Korea. That's obviously a big deal if they can get one more mana. Which they can't. Which they That's can't. not quite how the game works. But next turn, if the Doom Guard's alive, then that cube and that Dark Pact are going to start to do some horrible things together. It's now down to Woven to clear up that Doom God while there's still time, but there's another one drawn. So now yeah. Woven also needs to pick up some weapon removal. Yeah, now he also needs to pick up a bit of a miracle. He could borrow a mana from Twitch chat sometimes. They have spare. <laughs> well, there's Shadow Walk. So Turkey sort of have their win condition. Okay. But they're not there yet. Yeah, it could do with the um, Chain Gang, I guess, but... Chain Gang? Yeah, Chain Gang. Yes, Chain Gang would... Missing out the first word confused the heck out of myself there. <laughs> Saranite Chain Gang is pretty mandatory to uh, to win this one. It's still not drawn yet. Maybe Woven just dumps Grumble here because... <sighs> nah, he, he does need to play around the cube. I think he needs to deal with this. If I mean, you can Glacial Shard this and hope that there isn't a second Doom Guard or a cube or anything. So, yeah, that's just grim. I'm shuddering because I can see the uh, the cube there in hand. Shuddering. Yes. And walking. Shuddering. I'm not walking. You're walking. Okay. Well, again, the decisions this time are different to previous turns where he's actually got a wealth of options, but none of them are particularly good. And he's going to go with a occupy the board and hope it all goes away play. Again, it's horrible, but I feel as though this is the play to win. It's just get mm -hmm. to that turn nine shadow walk any way he can. Um, he's there hoping to draw to the Saranite... I, I forgot the name of the card then. The Sa Saranite Chain Gang um, before turn nine so that he can go ahead, play that, and get to his win condition. But sadly, there are going to be at least four Doom Guards hitting him in the face this turn. That's 20 damage. Yeah, with the Hellfire as well available on later turns. But obviously with um, Healing Rain being a thing, they don't necessarily want to leave this 7-7 hanging around, but they're not messing up. They're, they're fine hitting their opponent for 20, it turns out. Yeah, I agree with that, because how much work does Healing Rain actually do? With only seven mana, Woven cannot clear the board and cast Healing Rain, so he's in trouble, and there's no Healing Rain in hand. Yeah, there's, there's a Volcano, which actually would end up leaving one of the Doom Guards up nearly all of the time as a 5-1. There's a shot though, so he can so Volcano So he can finish shot. them off, yeah. And then hope your opponent has run out of demons, which he has, but he hasn't run out of giants or lackeys I or yeah, you know, hellfires. If he draws another hellfire and borrows a mana from Twitch chat, then he's fine. <laughs> Where are Twitch chat getting these extra mana crystals? I don't know. I've been trying to get them for ages. I want some. Yeah, Woven needs about nine of them right now. <laughs> yeah, add some more cards. Mainly the sound I change. <laughs> so is there any other, what other options would he be looking at? I mean... I'm almost certain nothing else keeps him alive here. Just, just look, well, just you look trade into board. one and freeze, freeze the other, the other two. two. And then that leaves you five mana. What can you do with that five mana? The answer is nothing. So you don't seem to gain much out of that play. If you had six mana and be able to drop a Hemet, maybe it'd be more of a consideration. Yeah, you're right. So really, w Woven struggling this turn just because he's one mana short. Pretty much anything he wants to do. Yeah, one damage short, one mana short. And in a minute, he's going to be very close to one life short. Stilo, two damage off lethal right now. There's Gordan. So in three turns, worst case scenario, he's going to get a bunch of Doom Guards. A bunch of Doom Guards. Is that the collective noun for Doom Guards? Gaggle. 
A gaggle of doom guards? A Gul'dan of doom guards? A Gul'dan of doom guards. Yeah, that works. <laughs> and really now, South Korea have to play as if their opponent has healing range. Because they just don't lose to anything yeah, else. Right. And they also have to work out, how do I beat turn nine Shudderwalk? Well, you probably just kill them. One life drinker played. Woven really not looking too happy here. I've got to admit, I didn't know too much about Woven coming into this, but uh, apparently he streams almost every day, has done for several years. Uh, and he did win a lot of money in an Amazon Gaming Series tournament oh, in nice. 2017. So he'll be used to the, the high stakes then. Yep. Glass. Gonna need to be, because this is really tough right now. Yeah, again, one mana short, right? Like Glacier Shard, Hemet would be very tempting if he didn't have two overloaded mana mm -hmm. crystals. He may end up just having to, to cast the Hex and Hero Power, but again, time is running out because Gul'dan is just going to end him in two turns. I mean, he got if Gul'dan's there, then he, he loses as far as he's concerned. He's got to treat it as if it's not there. Um, I mean, you've, you've got rid of some big minions. Getting rid of a giant with a Hex doesn't seem to be too prohibitive right now. It's just a shame that he couldn't deal with any of these Doom Guards with, with the Hexes to prevent them from coming back later. We said from the start, though, this is not a good matchup for the Shadow Walk because Doom Guard, does, because Q Block rather, does exactly this. I mean, yeah, but this is the worst case scenario. I mean, everything has gone right for Korea in this one. I mean, That's true. Woven didn't even have that bad a draw. No. He's just done Shadow Walky things on the first few turns. Not during any Saranites has been, you know, a, s a slight problem mm -hmm. for him, but you're right, it's not been terrible. And there's the second Hellfire, that's just going to be lethal. Stilo takes the first game of his first series in the Hearthstone Global Games. Yeah, Korea looking pretty good there. Um, game number two is going to be an important one as well, because it's a Hunter Mirror, I believe. And that's obviously, when you get a Mirror match in this format, it's a straight 50-50, yeah. absolutely nothing to discuss, except yeah. it's very important to win those ones. Yeah, not going to be any big one-sided things there, but South Korea going to be celebrating their first win. It's a big deal, right? You're going into this new tournament, not a new tournament, but the, the new year of this tournament, and you get the very first win of the series. It's got to make you feel confident moving forward. Keep a little head, ignore it, move on to game two. That's my way. Oh, really? If I lose, punch some things, cry. That's not a level head. Sulk in a corner. That's not a level head. I know, all. but you know, I'm not a pro player. <laughs> pro player would just sit there comfortably, <laughs> pretend it hasn't happened, get all the game. So, hang on, Linda. You don't celebrate when you win, but you cry when you lose. Yep. I okay. learned everything I know from Sotl. <laughs> Sounds good. As we just mentioned a moment ago, it's going to be Suni and Fujitora up next with the Hunter Mirror Match. And uh, these are going to be Egg Hunters, right? I believe so, yeah. It's pretty terrifying. Um, Egg Hunter just appeared over the last 10 days, yeah. maybe even less, and is absolutely everywhere on ladder. Yeah, it's sort of the evolution of the Recruit Hunter, yeah. right? Like this different Hunter archetype has been played with a lot. We've had Charge Devil, Saw King Crushes, Katarina, um, the, the o Sleeping Oozling, there we go, I got the name of the card there. Sleeping Oozling being sort of a key part of that deck, but now it's just transformed further. People have sort of remembered, hey, Hunter's an aggressive class, right? Let's just make this deck, but make it more aggressive. Yeah, and it is pretty brutal now. It's also reasonable in defense as well, which is what makes it so popular right now. Always interested when these new decks come along, which ones survive, which ones don't. Of course, they get a great start on ladder basically every time. And depending on you know, how good it is, basically, but depending how, on how people identify the weaknesses and learn to pick on the weakness depends on whether those decks survive. So it's going to be about how do you pick on the egg? Well, the answer is you kind of don't. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it's very difficult to know. Like, when do you clear it? When don't you clear yeah, it? Yeah, when do you just give them a 5-5 five -five to stop them having more 5-5s? Five -five? <laughs> we were playing some games of, uh, of Druid together, all of the casters the other day, and I, oh, no. I elected not to clear an egg, and Raven did not let me hear the end of that. He was like, no, you're going to get sworn by 5 fives now, and he was right. He was indeed right. It pains me to admit it, but he was. Um, but I do, I do love, this is one of the things I love about Hearthstone, right? Because you've got the, the rotation of all of the, uh, of all of the new expansions coming out. And we always seem to get this point, just just almost always like when the next expansion has been announced already, we have one tiny little change in the meta, whether it's Evolve Shaman appearing, Gunther Mage or something. But like this that. time is insane. We're getting not just one change in the meta. I mean, Zoo over the last three weeks That's has just true. reappeared yeah. as sort of mid-range Warlock. But, yep. you know, it's um, it's just a totally a deck that just wasn't around because everyone was playing, just thought that even Warlock was better. And it probably is. 
um, but it's a way of dealing with paladins so conclusively, especially on ladder, that the zoo is so, you know, come back to life. Other decks are coming back to life, and soon we're going to have an expansion rotation, and we haven't really settled this meta down yet. We, we probably know the best three or four decks, but the, the tier two stuff is just still evolving. We can pretty much pin the exact start time that Zoo came back is just after HCT Italy deck submission. Right. Because it wasn't in time for anyone to be there. was in there. one there in the, one. that tournament. That tournament was only a week ago. But since then we've seen it loads and we will be seeing some Zoo Warlock later today as well. We've had a sneaky look at the deck lists and assuming they don't get banned constantly then we will see them later today. So pretty excited for that. But now back to the aggressive matchup that we have coming up next. Uh, the Hunter Mirror. Now we've, we've talked a lot about Fujitora, um, and, and he is again. I can talk about Fujitora all day. Go for it. No, you can. After you. No, I don't, I don't think people want to talk, listen to me talk all day. They do that plenty. I love time. listening to you talk all day, Larissa. Good it's job, my really. Favorite hobby. You have to do it a lot. <laughs> but Fujitora is one of the re is is the main reason that I'm talking about Turkey being so fascinating because I feel like a lot of the a lot of the intrigue, a lot of the. Um, the trash talking, etc. Yep. I think it does come from him. I think he really does liven up the tournament. Um, and it's going to be good to see if his bite is as uh, hard as his bite. It is. He proved that at WSG. But can he carry that with a team without maybe upsetting the guys who aren't necessarily built like he is? We're going to continue more of the Hearthstone Global Games right after this. Thank you. 
Welcome back. We are sorry about the delay. We are just waiting for one of the players from South Korea to get ready. We're going to give him a few more minutes and see mm -hmm. what the situation is before we decide what to do. But uh, oh, it's a bit of a troubling start. Yeah, it's a thing that does happen in these big team tournaments. I'm sure it will all be fine. I'm, not, I'm never sure of anything, but there's a good chance it'll all be fine, let's face it. Uh, just looking at the decks here, as you see me glancing at the desk, um, they're basically the same, but there's double wing blast for Turkey and double um, grizzly for Korea. Oh, interesting. So, so they have got slightly more minions in there. So the, so there's no Grizzlies for Turkey? Correct, unless I'm go oh. going crazy. Interesting. It's cool to see Wingblast finally seeing some play. I feel like when that card was announced uh, towards the start of the expansion it's period... It's broken! Before, it's got one mana deal four damage. That's insane. But then it, it ended up not even being played in Spellhunter at the start of the, right. the rotation, at least. Yeah, for uh, like a day, and then everyone just sort of started cutting it. and. Oh yeah, sorry, it was played and then just wasn't. Yeah. Um, but now it's sort of started to come back in, and uh, yeah, we're seeing it here in Egg Hunter. I wonder what the logic behind that is. Just perhaps they feel they have enough minions, and the, I mean the Grizzly. The reason people played the the secret version of the old Recruit Hunter is because the Grizzly's kind of meh. Mm -hmm. It's actually really good against some decks, but against some decks it's kind of pointless, and it messes up with the, with the strategy you're trying to do. Yeah. So I wonder if they went that way. It's got, it's got to be partially down to the fact that Egg Hunter sort of focuses on, on contesting the board mm -hmm. rather than dealing face damage as fast as possible. You know, we don't always see Kill Command. In fact, we're not seeing Kill Command in either of these lists. So playing Wing Blast instead, just to aggressively fight for the board more, it's almost like um, this Egg Hunter is closer to traditional zoo than current zoo is. Sure. Because of how, how much it, it's fighting to contest the board, whereas zoo it is more like there's a little bit of that, but then... Oh, you, you mean current zoo is not like old zoo? Yeah, sure. Yeah, right. But but Egg Hunter is like old zoo, right? Because oh, like, old egg zoo, anyway. Old egg zoo with Nerubian eggs, the buffs and, and everything like that, yeah? Something that's interesting about cars like Wing Blast, I don't think necessarily we've got in the habit yet of building entirely new decks. Now, what I mean by that, obviously, you pick up a patron and you go, oh, this card does something new. Let's let's build an entirely new deck or a Shudder Walk or something, sure. But something that we've done in Hearthstone traditionally is take an old deck, look at the new expansion and go, this card fits in this deck and sort of keep the same deck. Miracle Rogue's done it for four years. <laughs> like, take out this four drop. Oh, we have a new four drop. Let's put that in. Same deck. And I think that people, when they're building new decks, still have this, they haven't managed to take everything in yet, apart from the very best deck builders, which is where these things come from. I don't think, in general, most players have got in the habit of looking at everything as a whole, as what's the new deck we can build out of all this stuff. Yeah, uh, it's something that we, we we see a little bit of, but, you, but you're right. Like Generally, that is the first thought. When a, new, when a new expansion comes out or when cards start to be revealed, we're just thinking, oh, yeah, that could go in this deck, that could go in this deck, that could go in this deck. It's only when... Oh, Big new mechanic like Odd and Even come out where we start to think, hey, this this is a, this is clearly a deck of its own. Because this Hunter deck, when you look at it, doesn't look like a surprising deck that's been built. No. It's like, oh, we have some Death Rattle stuff and stuff that triggers Death Rattle stuff. Seems fine. Right. Seems fairly obvious. Seems like someone should have built it sooner. But I think we're in the mode of people going, oh, well, look, we've got these new recruit mechanic. Let's use that. What can we recruit? Oh, we've got this lovely big recruit deck. And then, then the people sort of go, oh, yeah, we can play play dead in that. And then... Oh, yeah, Egg. It seems to work backwards from how you normally build a deck in some way. And, hey, Recruit Hunter is still a very strong deck. Clearly, right. in terms of today, we're seeing a lot more Egg Hunter, and that's, that seems to have overtaken it in popularity and in power level. But the, the root of the deck is, yet yeah, the weird Recruit Hunter, and, and that was an entirely new deck. And But, but that, again, that's the thing. The, the release happens, and then we do the Recruit, and then everyone works backwards from the new release cards. All right, sadly, we still haven't heard from South Korea yet. So we are going to have to go to another short break just to give them some time to come back. If they do not appear in the next few minutes, we will then update you and let you know what happens then. So uh, we'll be back soon. Whoa, what happened? There was so much low-budget CGI. Whoa, that portal must have taken us to the nether storm. <gasps> Dave, Hadija, Jamaro, Peter! They must be here too. <laughs> Boom Labs. It's so real and lifelike. Hello? I'm looking for some developers. <laughs> Not now, chicken. <laughs> there were four of them. Hello? Anyone? Begin Poultryizer security test number one, one, two. Poultryizer? 
Peter, Peter Whalen, the developer? Oh no! Security breach. Intruders, do not enter Boom Labs. Repeat, do not enter Boom Labs. Oh, there's gotta be something in here that'll get you de-chickenized. You there. <gasps> Who are you? Uh, hi. I'm an intern. One of my game developers is a chicken now. So, uh, I'm trying to fix that? That is not in your job responsibilities, intern. Science is. But he, see, he's turned into a chicken. Today's experiments are about efficiency. If I cast spells only with my right hand, what happens? Let us see. <laughs> A curious result. Wow! So, I can draw tons of cards, but only if I have the mana to play them immediately. You're right, Peter. Meta implications can wait. We still have to find the others. Hmm. <laughs> We're back, and Suni is here, so we are going to jump straight into the game. Apologies once again for keeping you waiting so long, but it's it's time. In case you've forgotten, it is going to be this Hunter Mirror. It had to happen sooner or later. <sighs> Got him.
And we're going back to a break. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Dad just <laughs> surrendered this situation. Sorry. Uh, ah! <laughs> I'm going to get him. We've got eight weeks to get him. I think we've, we started on a high note, guys. Um, and, yeah, we talked about the differences there. It is indeed Turkey who are playing the Wing Blast and South Korea who are going to be playing the Witchwoods. Otherwise, it's very much the deck you all know and love slash hate from Ladder, depending on your point of view. Yep. And, and see who gets the quick start. And, again, only if you've been playing for, like, the last, what, four days? <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah, this, this evolving meta, I sometimes forget that four days is a long time in Hearthstone. So how important do we think... I, I have to admit, I have no experience in the mirror whatsoever. How important do we think Play Dead is in this mulligan? I mean, I'm looking at Sunni's hand and thinking I keep it. Yeah? <laughs> um, but in terms of keeping it in general, I would say it's more important to get your minions down. Yeah. And Like Tur Turkey or Fujitora has the Stalker and also Play Dead. Surely mm -hmm. he only needs one of those. Yeah, you would think that he'd keep the minion just for some sort of presence as well. Uh, but he just gets rid of a lot, and he's going to go looking for the big stuff and the good stuff. That's bad. There's the good stuff. Oh my goodness, this is going to be a this is going to be a nail biter. It is, and it's going to be brutal. It's going to be interesting to see how the board gets established. And the double egg, not quite so useful because you can't trigger the second one, but still fine. It's an important game for Fujitora actually, because uh, as we said, looking down at the matchups. It's very South Korea favoured, this whole series. So uh, Turkey need to take every win that they can. As a rule of thumb, if a deck is named after a card, you want that card. <laughs> so Egg Hunter. Just look at South Korea's hand. Two eggs, two activators for them. Whew. Yeah, Turkey's not too far behind yeah. either. Coin Egg into Terra Scale Stalker is just absurd. Yeah, it does look really grim for Turkey. And we see this with Giants in like even lock mirrors where one player gets two Giants and one gets one. Mm -hmm. The one with the two doesn't even have to bother trading. They get to constant attack as advantage, yeah, just go face. Then the guy with only one has to trade and then you hit them with the other one and suddenly you've taken 16 damage. And this has hallmarks of that written over it where Suni's just going to be able to attack with five fives and Fuji's going to have to trade into those five fives just to stay alive. Yeah, this is. I, I was wondering for a second if it's better to coin out the, the play did on the egg next turn, but I think this is slightly better. He just ends up with a similar board, but better doing it this way as he gets the Terra Scout Stalker body as well as the five five next turn. Yeah, now he's hovering over those two as if there is a decision to be made. <laughs> Typical Fuji Tura. Just trying to mind games, Suni. I mean, the hand soon he's got, Fuji could end up with egg on his face here. <laughs> but, yep, does set up the second one. I'm so done. Can we have Derek and Gaskin, please? <laughs> Maybe next week. <laughs> all right. And now it's just about the the timing of all this for South Korea. Do you want the 5-5 five five now to begin the yes. beatdown? Yes. Yes. To get all of them in one go. I want to I wanna beat my opponent down straight away. I, I can't see too many advantages to putting down the second egg here. It's mm. not like it really changes anything mm -hmm. on the board. But this does change a lot. This is suddenly... Oh, look, Fujitora. This minion beats you in six turns on its own. Fuji not impressed with that. It seems to be I'm keeping an eye on him for the communication thing. I think that was a big thing that could have gone wrong in this. And he does seem to be very focused on talking to his teammates and not just soloing this. I mean, and he, so he should. Thunder Up's got a lot of Hearthstone points. He's not impressed because Suni has drawn as we refer to the nuts. The absolute. And now he's just on the defensive. He's got a four mana wing blast, this devil saw. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously hit the candle shot into it because he, he's got no way. Well, oh, mm, mm. he could play the scale hide, trade that into the three, three, and then wing blast the five, five for one mana. Yeah. And I, th I mean, we talked about wing blast uses earlier. You can also, he's not going to do it here because he's too far behind. You can wing blast your own eggs at times as well for very little mana. Yeah. You, yeah. you candle shot into something, suddenly you wing blast your egg. It's not quite as good as play dead, though, is it? It's not, but if you want three play deads in your deck, for instance, and you're only allowed two, yep. sometimes you have to make do with a, a second prize. Oh, this is a rough turn for Fujitora. He's, he's spending a lot of time listening to his teammates by the looks of things here. So, yeah, I can't win this. You guys get me out of it, or oh, it's your fault. <laughs> is that the type of attitude he's likely to have? Yes. There you go. He's going to go with the wing blast. I'm mean to Fuji. He's actually lovely in a lot of ways. He's done it with this without trading in the scale hide. I don't think really trading in scale hide adds anything to the turn. So uh, just casting the four mana wing blast is fine. Oh my goodness. It just gets better and better for Suni, doesn't it? He's got Argus for the eggs. He's got a high main to follow up all of this pressure. Madness. 
Where do you put this? You put the egg in the middle because you're playing Defender of Argus to put the two eggs in the way of your opponent. It's just, this is just insane. And whilst that would be normally a pretty good pickup, it's not, it's not a disaster in fairness. It's just not probably good enough right now. Gonna go with the cube instead. Fujitora finding his own way to apply some uh -huh. pressure. The good thing here is the cube itself actually is a 4 6. That's not bad stats at all. So he may decide he needs to do something about it, though I don't think he will because this Defender of Argus does a really clean job. Yeah, definitely seems to. Um, South Korea need to make sure their hand tells right now because other than the King Crush, obviously nothing else is really... They've used all the good stuff, so they need to make it count. And yeah, Turkey have had a good hand here. Mm -hmm. in, in another world, Turkey just won this and South Korea have conceded, but... This isn't that world, because South Korea's hand was even better. South Korea's hand was phenomenal. I don't think I've ever seen this deck perform better than this. Yeah, I think I agree. This is another reason why it's hard, so hard to evaluate this sort of deck when it's in its early stages of development, because sometimes they do this, and the people who get it happens to say, this is the best deck ever. Right. And the people who it doesn't happen to say, what is this rotten deck? So, <sighs> what? <Rotten eggs. laughs> What can Turkey do? Fujitora can trade into both of the eggs, I guess. Hunters mark one of the five fives and hit the candle shot into it. But then he's still leaving Sunni with two five fives on his board, along with Argus and the Terra. Yeah, Hill. find the line where you're not dead is actually quite difficult here. Yeah. So if you don't do anything, you're dead. I mean, you're going to be done. <laughs> That's obvious, but yeah, you're dead. And then there's a th not only you've got to find a line where you're not dead, you've then got to find a line where you're not dead and have any chance at all of winning the Hearthstone game. Yeah, Sunni currently has it's one damage off of lethal with this board right. here. And Fugitor's problem is that by attacking into stuff, it actually gives South Korea even more pressure. Um, no, no, these cards don't really do anything for him. And uh, it's, it's just... He's going to scale hide, he's going to hit with his face, yeah. Well, that's just lethal. Ten. Lethal on board, right? Press the magic button. That will indeed be lethal on Definitely board. Definitely lethal one on off? board. Okay, I'll take your word for it. No. Yeah, you've got a button that does two. Yeah. Fuji works it out as well, just as quickly as I did. Yeah, and unfortunately for Turkey, they lose the game, which I think was just so important that they won, given how that was the 50-50 matchup. Right. And moving forward, it's mostly bad matchups. And even the first game, like turning over the shutter walk with the shutter walk, wouldn't have been a thing that was impossible to mm -hmm. do. And they lost that as well. Now they're going into Druid versus Priest on the side of their Priest. Not good for Turkey. I have to admit, again, not a matchup I'm too familiar with. Malagos Druid versus Quest Priest. I'm not too familiar with Quest Priest as of late, actually. A little while ago, it seemed right. to be popular for a week or two. Like I said, I, I totally overlooked it when you said it. I'd just gone through, looked at the card right. from the bottom up and gone, eh, it's Mind Blast Priest. But. Yeah, yeah, and that's a very easy mistake to make. The only logic I can think of is that the Malagos Druid does run Alex Straza along with the combo. So as well as being able to pressure the priest down early, which it can, you know, the priest plays um, Amara, heals up to 40, Alex Straza happens. Yeah, it just, well done, I did 25 my Alex Straza instead of 15. Counterpoint to that is that there is the potential of the priest to go Amara and then Zola the Amara to play around Alex Straza. But then they've got to play around the fact that, uh, that South Korea can just one turn kill them with Alex hitting the twig and then do other things there as well. Let's take a look at this coming up game. As we said, it's going to be the Druid versus the Priest. Yeah, and Rivius has been on form, or Rivius has been on form all year, multiple tournaments. He's been so close to, to everything. He has qualified for Tokyo as well, as well as coming second in, in Bangkok earlier Bangkok, in the year. that's right, yep. Um, just uh, started off as a points monster. He's still getting a lot of points. He's on 96 towards last call already. That's not counting his Tokyo points. It, yeah, I have to admit, I believe Sotlan and I both overlooked him when we were at Bangkok at the time. Um, we, we, I remember ob that. Obviously, we that knew that fun. he was coming second and, or, or yeah. in the top two, and that was great, but we didn't realize he was one of the top few points earners as well. Um, and that's that's a lot of respect that we have to give to him for being in that In position. fairness, he had a pretty goofy lineup there. So, you know, sometimes when you, you don't know a player so well from a region you're not so used to, you look at a lineup and go, who's this guy? 
But it turns out that this guy was actually the guy who was running away with the points in the region at the time and continues to put up good result by, after good result. By goofy lineup, you mean Prince Tadorum and Iron Beak Owl in the same deck, which should not work at all. But hey, yeah, very Pretty good. good result indeed. Um, no, I'm still torn, actually. The more I think of it, I'm, I'm talking myself into the Priest actually being in a good position in this matchup because it does run Gluttonous Ooze. So if it shuts down the Mali Druid's weapon, if it heals up to 40, if it Zola's the Amara, that's the key part. If it plays Zola the Gorgon on Amara, how does the Druid then win? Yeah, I mean, if it does all of those things, there's a lot of ifs in there. <laughs> there are a that's, lot that's, of ifs That's the thing things. when you're looking at matchups like that for me is the more ifs you have to use, the more you're trying to talk yourself into something. That doesn't always mean you're wrong. I have been talking myself exactly, into it. I've right? did a really good job. Then you have to work out what are the chances of these things actually happening. Yeah. And, I mean, the chance of Druid getting some ramp and doing naughty things is pretty high. The chance of the priest getting their cards in the right order, okay, they've got quite a bit of card draw available, I believe, but... Not quite so high. A lot of the priests is about survival. They've got spirit lashes in there, those mm. sort of cards. You know, which is just completely dead cards in the matchup. So key card for the priest, Gluttonous Ooze. Other key the, the next key card for the priest, I guess, is the quest itself, because the quest has to be completed and then get up to forty. And then the, the final key facet of this matchup is can the druid get the priest in the position where they have to play Amara early? Right. If yes, then Amara gets played, then Alex happens and they win. If no, then Amara can be saved for this Alexstrasza turn, and then that's a big issue for the Druid. So the use is the key to that. I think, I think so. Either. I think so, yeah. This and then you've just got to get the ordering. And again, you do get some time, so interesting to see how that ordering works out. South Korea currently 2-0 and oh in this series. This game is imperative for Turkey. They have to win this, or they are going to take their first loss at 3-0, that's not where you want to be. Really is not. I mean, tiebreakers are not a thing. It's almost certainly a clean cut, I believe. So it's as well to lose 3-0 as 3-2 in this particular event. But uh, you know, like you said earlier, you want to get that first win on the board and all those other things yeah. that people say. Of course you do. If you lose 3-0 in a team event, you've got to make sure the team gels together. It's like, okay, we lost this as a team. We move on to and next week. That's the, the issue, deal. Right? Like, as you said, tiebreakers aren't necessarily an aspect that we're thinking about, but emotionally, like, it does not feel good to win, th like, zero, th sorry, to lose zero three. It feels very good to win three zero. As I mean, in thing. fairness, you can go home, you can reason it. Okay, we got outpicked. How do we fix that? Then, then you look at what happened in the Hunter Mirror? And they haven't lost yet, but what happened in the Hunter Mirror? You go, well, we can't fix that. We, we lose that game 100% of the time, so let's just move on with our lives. Yep, it's going to be all about that team sort of getting themselves together if they do take this loss, you know, uh, rationalizing it, realizing, you know, hey, sometimes it can't be helped, getting together and just trying again next week and not letting this affect them too much. Yeah, and they've still got to get through this yet. Um, it's the Warrior and the Paladin at the end that's just terrifying me. Awesome. They've got to beat the Warrior with Paladin. That matchup is just so, so, so difficult. Anyway, into game number three. Let's see how they progress with this Twig in the opening hand for Korea. All right, yeah, Twig is there. Thunder Up is going to want that ooze pretty badly. So I would imagine a pretty quick uh, discarding everything other than the quest just as Dak Revius discards everything other than the Twig, and he gets Wild Growth too. This is going to be a blisteringly fast start for Revius. Yeah, it's, it's pretty silly when you get that going. Um, you do end up sometimes the decision, when do you Twig? Like, if you get it going too quickly before you get all your other stuff, do you really want to blow your own Twig up? Um, depending on your other cards. But with this particular hand, they are going to be able to apply so much pressure. You have to trust Druid decks. I feel as the though... The cards will come. All he needs to draw is Nourish or Ultimate Infestation. And yeah. he's good. Yeah, and that's the thing. Druid decks are so consistent because of all that great card draw. Which is kind of irritating. Rivius is also running uh, double, double, uh, two copies of Branching Paths, two copies of Ferocious Howl. There aren't that many cards in his deck that don't draw him cards. That's the, that's the thing. And there's Malagos as well. Picked up right on cue. Well, not right on cue. A little bit early. It's good to have, though. Yeah, I think when you get this sort of hand, you're not as disappointed as normal to get the Malagos early. Uh, you'd rather it be there than card number 30, I think, in this particular <laughs> situation. Uh, Thunder Up has managed to get a slightly better hand after the mulligan. Mm -hmm. At least you can do stuff now. Yeah, Loot Hoarder is invaluable in this deck. Not only is it a proc on the quest, but it's the, it's, it's his cantrip. It's his way of drawing through the deck and uh, getting those key cards like the Glutton Suits. 
Turkey the ones with all the pressure in this match. Not just because they're 2-0 down, but because in the actual game happening right now, they're the ones whose decisions are going to change the outcome. Like South Korea, <laughs> looking at this hand, they're just going to do the things they can do. Thunder up already, not looking too happy about this. <laughs> the face he pulled when he played that quest didn't look like someone that had just done something he wanted to do. That wasn't my opponent kept a lot of cards as Druid looked. <laughs> I mean, there's not many cards it can be. You know you know the sort of things that are going to happen to you when your opponent keeps those cards when they're playing Druid. And you know those things are not pretty. Like if you're playing against Paladin or something and they keep two cards, eh, they're probably going to curve and be annoying to you. If you're playing against Druid, they're just going to ruin your day. Well, that Twig's coming down. The beautiful thing about South Korea playing the Twig now is that it doesn't really matter if Turkey's drawn ooze or not because they're not going to play it until uh, Dak Rivias is at 10 mana. Most likely. <laughs> <laughs> well, they definitely shouldn't. They shouldn't be in this tournament if they're going to do that. Yeah, it depends how early. I mean, how much money yeah. can you get away with giving them? Maybe on 8 mana if you can psychic screen the turn after, for instance. Yeah, I agree. Um, there's an option to kill it. But yeah, you're right. You, you, in general, they're not going to do it now. Not on turn 3, they're not, no. But uh, yeah, okay, these are pretty much precisely the cards that, that Turkey right. wants to draw at this point. Just everything that goes towards the quest. Plated Beetle, obviously armor is, is great in a matchup that runs Alec... Uh, sorry, against a deck that runs Alex Straza. Yeah, just damage that can't be undone. You've actually got to find a different way to deal it. <laughs> Tempo Arcane Tyrant on turn five. Let yeah, why go. not? I think people over or underrate this place. It's so obvious that it doesn't need to cost naught. If it costs naught, it would leave you with five mana left over and it waste the turn anyway. Yep. yep. So why are you mess about? Moonfire, not the most helpful card for Thunder Up. He's not going to get a copy of Malagos this game as it's already been drawn for Rivius. So this Moonfire does nothing. Or very little, at least. Yeah, they need to work out now how they intend to deal with this situation as well. Can they try and put any pressure on? I mean, the answer is no. Can they even get the board? Uh, probably not. Shadow Visions occurred there. Yes, it has been cast. We'll uh, work out what those options are soon. No, we won't, but there's a Twilight's Call, which isn't the card you necessarily think of when you think Shadow Visions, but in this deck, where the objective is to complete that quest as fast as possible and have Amara in the hand, not to mention Zola is there too, so that Amara is going to do some incredible things. I, I do like the pick of Twilight's Call. Yeah. Draw some more cards, complete Drawing the quest, like say. And doing all they can to try and generate both cycle and some sort of problem for the Druid. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm giggling to myself because it's not really a problem. Spreading Plague would normally deal with this in a lot of situations as well. And the Druid is just on so much more mana. How many times have we said that in Hearthstone tournaments, Dan? What, the Druid is on more mana than the There's so opponent? much more mana. Yeah, yeah. It's, only, it's only one wild growth here, but <laughs> they went first as well. It's just insane. Rivius trying to get to that combo. And that's, that's what the Mali Dru Druid does nowadays, right? That's why all of its deck is card draw. All it wants to do is draw its deck, win with the combo. Or win yeah. with Malagos and Alexstrasza, and it, maybe use the Lich King for something too. Don't die, draw your deck, win with the combo. And if the combo goes wrong, <laughs> win with Alexstrasza soloing. Why does Turkey keep getting Moonfires? I don't know, it doesn't seem like the best play. Just thoroughly unhelpful. Yeah, they might even be tempted to use them like soon just to get rid of this four four. Well, they'll be they'll be hoping at this point they can somehow rip a Malagos, but it, it can't happen. They they need to work out whether the Moonfires are more useful to them in their hand, like as potential threats, or if getting the two damage out of them is actually worth much. Yeah. So I don't think we'll see them just throw them away here because the, the threat of we might have something good. I don't, I don't mind using it to deal with that Arcane Tyrant, though. It looks like they're going to use one, yeah. It seems very cost-effective. Can still heal face. Can still, what, or heal the beetle? Yeah, heal, the, heal the beetle. Better. Get themselves a little bit of pressure. But these are the situations that Druid loves. They're going to need more than just a bit of pressure. But it may slow the Druid down. Like, they don't really want to be messing around playing Spreading Plagues. They want to be drawing cards and all that good stuff. So Rivius has a few options here. He can play the Spreading Plague and the Arcane Tyrant. He's never going to get a fantastic Spreading Plague uh -huh. against um, Quest Priests. This what? might be as good as it gets. And again, being able to jam Arcane Tyrant at the same time is a big benefit. Or you can just eat the damage and branching paths I think and start rifling through your deck. I do think I prefer that because 
literally, this quest priest is not killing uh, Revius anytime soon. Right. So he has the time to get to this win condition. However, if you feel you can reverse the board, which at the moment you can't, and start actually doing some chip damage as well, that could come in handy. Right. And because that's the other use of branching pass to buff up a board full of spreading plagues to, to build up the attack and actually deal some damage there. Uh, okay, Rivist is going to go with the spreading plague. Will he save the charge on the weapon? That's another question. Most likely. No, he'll look use at, it. Look at that, though. It, it, it's given him a much, much better board. And uh, I guess vitally, Psychic Scream isn't castable yet this turn. Uh, Turkey don't have the mana. So South Korea will get a chance to branch and pass up this board and start to deal some damage. Yeah, I think they might save it for card draw even so, though. Maybe. Um, if the damage isn't going to be unhealable, I can't even think of a good word. There. So getting through the three armor is good, but chipping into the 26, not so much. It's nice, mm. but in terms of losing your branching pass when you know that um, Psychic Scream is very likely, you, you might not want that trade-off. Because it fills your deck full of that cluttery stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if they if they see what the next card draw is, mm -hmm. then draw one with branching paths if that's no good. Sure. And then obviously if they've drawn an ultimate infestation or a nourish yep. by then, they can afford to do the attack buff. I'm good with that. Then again, all of that being said, it's totally useless as Dustbreaker going to come down and end Rivius' plans <laughs> of buffing up the board. Moonfire will make short work of the tyrant. The um, uh, Twilight Acolyte will deal with one of these plagues, and that's pretty much a board clear. Yeah, managing to reverse the board and get a little bit of pressure back on their side, but it is only a little bit. Rivia still on 23 points of health. There's Nourish. Okay. So Rivius almost has the tools he needs to win this game. I mean, he could even consider um, using the Innovate. If he cast one or the other, the branching pass, Nourish draws some cards. Uh -huh. He can Innovate the other one if it feels that way. That's true. Hmm. Just to try and draw so many cards. Which one first, though? The problem with Nourish is that it renders Ultimate Infestation almost useless if that's drawn, as there won't be the hand space to cast it. However, on the other side, it means your branching path can be freed up to use its other options if needed, like gaining 12 armor to that's delay your opponent. That's true. What to do? So this is the route they're going to take, is you see those cards and um, preserve the branching pass, and they'll be interesting to see based on what they draw whether they consider the innovate branching pass because it speeds them up, but obviously you don't have an innovate anymore. Oh, Alex Straza and Faceless, uh, and the Lich King picks up from that nourish. South Korea one charge left of the weapon. Yep. This could be over much, much quicker than we expected. He made that decision after seeing those cards. It's just like, yep, yeah, I'm innovating at that branching pass and trying to find ways to win in the Hearthstone game. <laughs> just now decided he wants a way to win this Hearthstone game? Yeah, sure. I mean, soon he took 10 minutes to decide. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Twilight's Call is another two death rattles. I'm not sure how many the quest is on, but it it's, can't, it's very close, it can't yeah. be far off. Yeah. And this is where the game will start reaching that intricate part where your opponent's Alex Straza mm -hmm. is a thing. Of course, if they kill you in one turn, it doesn't matter. But So while the weapon is there at one charge, um, Thunder Up has to consider that, that South Korea can deal a stupid amount of damage to them. That's a very good way of putting it. Uh, <laughs> stupid amount of stuff. A very safe better? way of putting it as well. Um, so, consider. it's very difficult to know whether or not he needs to, to actually play that Amara preemptively. Yeah, and I mean, Apart from the, the direct damage, which there's plenty of to come for South Korea, they can play around either or. Whichever one Turkey chooses to use, South Korea will just go the other way. Now that's it, quest complete. The armor's great too. Again, uh, you don't necessarily usually want Plated Beetle from Twilight to cool, but armor is, the armor is really good. 13 cards left for South Korea, and a lot of those cards will be doing points of damage to the opponent's face. There's still both Moonfires to come, I believe. They don't get stolen, they just get borrowed. <laughs> this isn't a fun turn, actually. There's no moon fires in South Korea's hand. That's the big issue here, because, hmm. you know, there's, there's definitely an argument for Alex Straza hitting the weapon, Malagos, moon fire, moon. Like, if that was available, to right. him, he'd love it. But next turn's not looking nice either. If they're going to UI, they haven't got a way to empty their hand right now. Not a, not a satisfactory one. So he can play Starfall, 
that clears everything except the Twilight Acolyte. Could even Hero Power and hit the weapon in, although that's then a waste. That's the combo dead. I mean, I think they want to do that, but the problem is they're looking for, for damage, mm -hmm. and that just removes them. Alternatively, Rivius could just dump the Lich King. Time waits for no one. There are a lot of cards. Yeah, that feels like the default play. Yeah, I agree. Like you were going to say, uh, there's plenty of stuff that could come from that. There's a lot of Deathmite cards that could be helpful. He's going to just drop Malagos hitting the... Okay, it's combo time now. He's going to have to be pretty quick. There is an issue with this. And that issue is Psychic Scream sitting in front of us. Right, but the other side of it, you have Ultimate Infestation and you have two Maligoses in your deck. Two Maligos? Maligis. Maligai? I let Mali Geese will go with that. So I think that's what took so long there. Now this is on the board. First of all, your opponent, if they don't have Psychic Scream, you're in a rather good situation. But there's only so much damage Rivius can deal with one Mali Goss at a time. And again, we're looking at two Amaras, essentially, mm -hmm. in Turkey's hand. Thunder Up can restore his health to 40 twice this game. I'm really starting to wonder how South Korea get through this. A very good Lich King. I mean, Turkey have drawn a lot of extra cards as well. As you can see, their um, career are only two cards behind in their deck. Maybe they just feel that Turkey can't ever kill them. I guess. And but then they'll get it done with a Lich King or something. There's also the very real potential that a Malago sticks. Uh, there's only two Psychic Screams. One's already been used. Right, so going, like you say, you can't have it all in one go, but mm -hmm. if you just run Turkey out of, out of stuff, you'll probably find a way to, to get the victory. So in that turn, South Korea decided that they want to take the long con that game. Um, I mean, what can Turkey use to remove Malagos? They've got uh, one Cabal Shadow Priest. Right. They can go Acolyte Shadow Priest once. Yeah, it's just going to stick. You've got two of them. Yeah, they're not going for the long game. They just, they've got both Mali Geese back in hand already. <laughs> That's not a long game at all, yeah. Second Psychic Scream is there, but again, you can only scream one of them. And it comes Ooh. back again, so that the in inevitability is what they're playing for. And there's a Cabal Shadow Priest drawn, though. So if, mm -hmm. if Rivius does just dump Maligos next turn, play a Moonfire, Turkey just steal it for themselves. Shame Turkey used those two Moonfires mm. they had hanging about in their <laughs> yeah. hand, really. I was saying there's no, there's no way that they get one, but there you go. I hadn't considered that option. Yeah, they could have had 10 damage in hand right now in the most spectacular of fashions. I clearly hadn't considered Psychic Scream either, so that's my, that's my bad. There's always a way to get a Malagos, apparently. Yeah, there must always be a Malagos. I must consider it. Or two. Or more. <laughs> Some integral number of Mali Geese is always available <laughs> to one. Um, so, Thunder Up. He's got that Bone Drake in his hand. I wonder what dragons could get him out of this. Hmm. Gonna go for the first Amara. Yeah. Dumping an 8-8 on the board's not so bad, I guess. I mean, it's, this seems absolutely fine, right? This is what you were talking about at the start. Amara Zola is just such a key yes, combo in this deck, yeah. Ooh. Not that Swipe could... Well, no, Swipe probably would have been played with the Malagos at some point, because, again, they, it's gonna stick. Mm -hmm. So that burn kind of sucks for Rivius. Don't forget as well, they had the, the decision to make with the twig based on the fact your opponent's going to ooze you at some point anyway, so you can't hold on to it forever. Lorinda, I've just realized something very stupid. Oh dear. We've been talking about inevitability and uh, South Korea beating Turkey because Turkey can't kill them. Turkey have Archbishop Benedictus in the Oh, deck. do they? <laughs> so, when we're talking about inevitability, right. I think we have to give Thunder up the, the win there. And, and again, this play we've been talking about for the last few turns, it now happens. That's bad news for Rivius. That's really bad news for Rivius. So while you were um, exploring that avenue of caster silliness, um, yeah, the, the other thing is the, the ooze was going to come at some point, so Rivius had to use the twig before he got nothing from it. Yes. Because they were, they were quite yeah. away from getting the, the direct damage. You're right, yeah. So that was the assessment there as well. But like... This game seems to have so many levels to it because you say, yeah, but then this happens. Yeah, but then this happens. Yeah, but then oh, that's, this happens. That's Hearthstone at the moment. But, but now we're at, okay, Benedictus happens. Then what? Then everyone gets loads of cards. No, then Turkey get loads of right. cards. That's that's the issue. But can they use them? If, uh, but whose side are they on, Falk? <laughs> the cards. <laughs> Uh, you don't even know anything, pass. do you? I have no idea what's going on right now. The other thing is that, that Thunder Up can get a better 
um, Benedictus if they if he can um, psychic scream Malaga again. No yeah. And then he gets another copy of his very own Maligos. Yeah, Korea needs to try and set up a way where they don't have to face the second Amara, which is going to involve getting a board and then Alex Strazing and getting a lot of damage done in one go. And they feel this is their best chance of doing that. One card's going to get burnt here. Okay, it's not Benedictus, that's the key. Benny is fine. So yeah, I mean, I'm looking at Psychic Scream from Thunder up now, and then Benedictus, and the great thing is there, if he Psychic Screams his own Zola into Revius's deck, then Benedictus, he can play Amara a third time this game. You're a fan of this, aren't you? I am a big fan of this. This infinite loop. It's not infinite, but it's infinite enough. Hmm. Well, Korea are trying to find ways to set up the the bypass for the Amara, which is just, well, I play Alex Dras and I kill you. Not quite there yet, and of course the second Psychic Scream is making that very difficult. I wonder... Thunder up trying to work out the pros and cons of this Benedictus. I'd be interested to know who, who made the call to bring this deck, because it's not a deck that many of them would have played recently. It's going to be sure. the same on a lot of teams with a lot of Tier 2, for that class, <laughs> decks. Um, somebody's going to have to play it well. It's fine when you bring all the top decks, which most people have done. All right, Turkey, I'm very disappointed. Turkey decided not to, <laughs> not to put Zola back in South Korea's deck. I guess the downside is the potential of them Zolaing another Malaga. Yeah, that sounds like a bad there, thing so. waiting to happen. However, Benedictus is going to get Thunder up his second Malagos of this game, by the looks of things. So, knowing the deck list, knowing it's coming, <laughs> Thunder's looking quite excitable. Um, is he? Rivius now can can take the view. He's seen both psychic screams, where just keep threatening lethal. Benedictus costs too much mana to be messing around with. True. So if they can just keep making it difficult for for Turkey. So when do Turkey want? To, sorry, when does South Korea want to play the Alexstrasza? Is my next question because obviously. That then has to be countered by Amara, right? I mean, in the ideal world, though, let's put it in basic terms that aren't going to happen. You'll have 15 attack on board. Yeah. So you, you get around the Amaras. In real terms, where you stuck a Maligos, maybe? Yeah, he's trying to stick a Maligos. It's just not sticking. And so you can almost kill them in one turn, at least. Force the second Amara and then do it all again. But because South Korea did not make an aggressive play that turn, it's got to be Benedictus here. To think. There's also this um, cheeky spirit life saving mm. for a bit of health gain later as mm. well. Yeah. Not that I don't think that's going to actually come into anything. I, but. I don't know how much health gain Turkey are even ever going to need this game. I think with the Quest Priest, with the Amaras, uh, with the Psychic Screams, and with uh, Benedictus, they've they may have tied this one up. Maybe. Um, Shadow of Death is going to. I, I definitely get the point. Yeah, Shadow of Death is going to be important. Nine. It's a case of whether, because now, of course, the, the deck is diluted with stuff they don't necessarily want. Yeah. Whether Korea can get a Lich King to stick or an Alex to stick. But there's the second Shadow Word death. Well, that, that's interesting because obviously they played the Visions first because they didn't want to draw a swipe or a mm -hmm. Spellstone or something that they didn't want. They wanted that Shadow Word death. So it's kind of ironic that that was then the first card they drew after Benedictus as well. And that does seem to have really made things difficult here. Um, Thunder Up is going to struggle to drown to win now this game. However, fatigue is a very, very real factor here, and I don't, I really don't see Rivius dealing the damage. Yeah, well, he's decided he's not going to win the fatigue, so the only way to win the game is to deal the damage, and you've got to do it twice. So he needs a couple of turns in a row which burst things onto the board. I can't see it getting done either. But maybe. I mean, Amara's not... Well, it is okay board presence, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's an 8 It's a 5-mana 8-8. Eight, eight. What but, else do you want? Yeah, I mean, you, you want Shadow of Death. How do you deal with the Malagos, though, with this, this deck at the moment? You used um, both Psychic Screams. Yep. If Vivia sticks a Malagos around for a uh, number of turns where he can Moonfire and Swipe... Well, actually, we can work this out, right? So Malagos Moonfire is 6 damage. Malagos Swipe is 9. That's 15. That's it. 
like, and then, then obviously Malagos' attack power is something to consider. But uh, Malagos, even with all of the spells that Rivius has left available to him, I don't think that gets past 40 health twice. I mean, it does sound very difficult, but that's his route to trying. <laughs> We're at the point where Thunder Up's like, yeah, okay, I can't deal with your Malagos. I mean, he's, so he's still hoping for, look, if you've got, if there is only one Shadow Word death, he could stick an Alex Straza or a Lich King. So from, from where Dark Rivius is, mm -hmm. He, he's got a fairly decent yeah. chance of that happening, but, but the, we can see the double shadow word yeah. death. The fact that Death Amara is a turn after Alex Straza is uh, its just oh, too much for, for yeah. South Korea to get past. I remember one of those deaths had to be picked up. There's only one organically in the deck. Mm -hmm. So again, Korea playing on this position, they feel that one of those will stick on the board. Mm -hmm. Or they'll, they'll have a good idea that Turkey made a great play taking out shadow word death. Oh, Amara Zola is such an obnoxious combo. Yes, yes it is. And the great thing about Zola in this deck as well is you can play on Benedictus if you want instead, you know? That's just an alternate win condition against a deck that can't deal so much burst damage. So I assume they'll try and get the Ghoul down first just to try mm. and draw something away from Turkey. Because if they can stick a Lich King and get some cards that do things. Fosmorn. Fosmorn's pretty good right now, in fact. Whenever you've got the Lich King, things can happen, right? So doing it, all the damage they can to Maligos, but it's not enough to kill it off. So I assume this would prompt the swipe to come to play. Yeah, it's as good a swipe as Rubius is ever going to get. Yeah, if he gets a better one, he's already lost, so yeah. Do you want a plague first? Not really. You get one minion with it anyway. My thoughts are plagued. By spreading plagues? Uh, what else could you do? And there's no reason to let your Malagos die, you just need to do damage. Once with spells and once with big board, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's save the swipe, assuming yeah. Malagos. If Malagos couldn't be dealt with last turn, it can't be sure. dealt with this turn. That's fine. Shame they couldn't find a way to get a big minion down, but they did find a way to get the 5-5 five five down, which is testing for those Shadow Word deaths. Mm -hmm. And actually really annoying for Turkey because they haven't got that many big minions left to challenge the board. The biggest minion is Amara. Well, they don't mind if Amara's played. Never mind any of that. There's Alex Strauss. <laughs> Now they're in the position that we were talking about a minute ago. I, I mentioned it earlier that if South Korea can set up a situation where they Alex and can do 15 on the same turn, yeah. then they can win. Well, they're in a position where they can do 14 right now. So... <sighs> but, but look at the follow-up. If next turn... I'm, I'm just ignoring Thunder up for a second here. If, um, if Korea next turn, let's say they do Alex Straza and force the Amara, there's a lot of stuff on the board that isn't being dealt with because you've had to play five mana into your Amara. So one of your big guys lives. You know, if South Korea can get like a Frostmourne or something from their Lich King, set up another five damage. Well, Gladness is still in Priest's hand, so never mind that. There goes one of the Shadow Word deaths, though. Ah, well, that is big. They need to look after the Shadow Word death, in my opinion, because now the Lich King's got a chance of sticking around, or Alex Straza has. I have no doubt the Thunder Up knows exactly what's in Of course, yeah. As well. it's, mo it's much more difficult for Rivius because, because Benedictus thinks. And they are running out of time. That, that ticking fatigue clock is starting to tick pretty fast now. Hmm. My <laughs> thoughts are South Korea's going to have to use them. some of this uh, Malagos damage to deal with that Bone Drake. That's kind of annoying. Or they could just not. South Korea could just put the Lich King down, hit face with Malagos. So your turn. Yeah, but then you lose the Malagos the death, most yeah. of the time. Yeah, yeah. Death and I mean, you've, you've got to work out if you think they've got the second death of the chance that they have. You've then got to work out if you can beat it if they have anyway. And Lich King into Frostmourne does see a way forward, but... But it doesn't because of the ooze. And Rivius knows that ooze is in the deck somewhere. Death is eternal. I, I was thinking Frostmourne just to set up that extra five damage, so as well as the board, as well as the Malagos move. But you can get an extra minion if it gets used if you kill something with it as That's well. That's true. That is true, actually. That Might be the line they're going for. Well, let's find out. Army of the Dead, entirely useless here. 
Uh, Doom Pact would be okay, I guess, because he's out of damage anyway. And there goes Moonfire. Yeah, I mean, they, they've decided they're going to stick the board and do it that way. He gets the Frostmourne. Frostmourne. Okay. Uh, <laughs> a Cinder Ghost uh, plus Spirit Lash is something that Turkey can do at some point too, just to get these extra legendaries in their hand. Yeah, I feel like that might be too slow for how many turns left in the game, but it's definitely an option if they're desperate. <laughs> What's even happening? We've man? seen so many Malagos this game. <laughs> I don't even know anymore what's occurring. It's been Psychic Screamed twice, been stolen, been Benedictus. Five mana, not much to do here. And if they don't heal, they're so close to dead. But again, you, you said it, there's four of them. They know every single card in the opponent's hand and deck. They can plan accordingly. And, yeah. They really are getting there. And it doesn't appear to be anything great they can do here. The Alex Stars is going to stick. I but they can't even like, kill anything with the Frostborn. Well, how does the Alex Stars get killed? It's a okay. lot of damage on board. So then that plays Amara everywhere. Obviously here, he has to. So that's five mana remaining. Mm -hmm. What else does he do? He could Twilight's Cool, play to Beetle. <sighs> you are safe now. That's a lot of damage coming in the next couple of turns here. It is, however... What else can he do, is the question. And he got Bone Drake, which is the, the best thing he could from this uh, Twilight's Call as well. South yep. Korea has... It was a clear, they managed to stick the board. South Korea has three or, two, three or four turns left at the most, though, before the fatigue damage does get to them. Yeah, but this is going to come in really rapidly now. It's true. No more Amaras. After all of that, have Rivius managed to take this game? <laughs> by dominating the board, that ghoul eating up that shadow of death may be what took this away for South Korea. That's insane. Not over yet. Turkey got ferocious howl and healing in hand. They can also try and stick their own board. And Anduin! there is Anduin. Of course. The other shadow of death wannabe. <laughs> they know the Malagos is safe. It's not. The, it's not the menacing threat it appears. It's just a four-five now. Uh, the. I'm almost certain Anduin is coming down here. The only issue is obviously there's no healing left for them. Then again, it's just going to take a couple pings to, to finish off Malagos now, and then Rivius is entirely out of threat. Yeah, and they're, I mean, they're taking six this turn, I think, or it might be five. They're taking a chunk of damage from the fatigue. Yeah, they're, they are they are now done. So Shadow Reaper Anduin, not quite as powerful as it used to be with Raza, but still doing some serious work here. Just yeah. as a pseudo shadow of death. Rest. Thunder up, Grant Turkey, their first win of the series. They have opened a little crack in that door. They have. Um, they've now got to win uh, a decent chance of winning this one. They've got the Warrior against the Mage, and then we'll talk about game five. We mentioned it a few times when it comes to it, but they look in bad shape. Okay, that one. Well, yeah, but let's slow down one at a time. It's going to be Quest Warrior versus Big Spell Mage next. Yes. This should be Turkey's game. It's Quest Warrior versus Big Spell Mage. It's Warrior. Got a decent chance, yeah. We've got fireballs going all over the place. Not mage fireballs, but Ragnar's fireballs going all over the place. They, they should win this one. I'm from the subtle school of Jaina. <laughs> yeah, Jaina. Is that how he does it? Jaina. I don't think that's how he does it. Okay, I think it's quite close. But I don't think he's a big fan. And I, are, you, are you saying you're not either? It's, it's not that there's anything wrong with Jaina. It, the problem is that the deck is built around a 50 50 chance that you get a thing on turn nine or you don't. Okay. In a lot of matchups. I mean, it's obviously not that trivial, but that's, that's what leads to the sort of curled up nose. Is like, eh. <laughs> this isn't a completely one sided matchup. Of course, no. Uh, as, as we take a look at the matchup. As the uh, the one that we're going to have a little bit later on, that is a completely one-sided matchup, but we'll right. get to that later. Um, Rivius back again after losing the first game for South Korea, so he's got to pick himself up. Yeah, interesting. Um, there's a few decisions he had to make there as well. Um, choosing to use the twig to get a temporary advantage, knowing that the user was in the opponent's deck. 
and didn't work out for him. And you called it at the time, like he's got a lot to do now. It looked like he was going to get double Maligos action. That was, I mean, I think he did a great job with the tools that he had when we got to the end of the game. The fact that he almost did get there. If Anduin wasn't drawn at that last moment, then... Uh, I mean, there were two cards left. There were two cards left. So we are talking a 50-50. And right. even then after that the following turn would probably have still been in time. Yeah, it would have been a lot more interesting, but yeah, I think you're right. I mean, that game was very interesting. I mean, just that matchup in general, the fact that I had to sort of talk my way around at the start. Oh, no, this is Malaga Stewart favoured. Wait a second. What if this happens, then this happens? And it it ended up being a very complex game. And that's the thing with Hearthstone Global Games this time around. It was the same last time with the nine decks, but this time with the picks and bans, we're going to see a lot more of those. You end up with your, your worst deck a lot of the time because of the way you get down to, through the pick bands, you get down to two, and your opponent bans one. Yep. So out of those two, you have the worst deck, and a lot of the time, that's going to be the worst deck in the whole lineup. Yep. But so Rivius, everything. Rivius, again, he, he uh, we're, we're, we're going to be ready with this game very shortly. Jaina wins this matchup, then, you think, if it, if it gets dropped on turn nine? I mean, it helps. It doesn't I win it if it doesn't get dropped on turn nine. It helps. It helps with all. We saw earlier in the Sweden match. You know, it's, if Jaina even is in the deck, even in the hand, it can be too slow. But mm -hmm. that was a particularly fast draw that Japan had in that game. I think. The the problem is with with the the mage is that there's no real way to beat down the warrior before the quest gets completed. Right. And then if the quest gets completed and Jaina's on the board, the warrior just doesn't play anything else at that point, right? They just hero power. Here. Yeah, and the, and the mage removal, okay, it's removing the stuff on the board so it doesn't get killed, but when you play a taunt minion in, in the quest warrior, a lot of the job's already been done. You, they've advanced the quest, which is the primary thing, like you say, then they generate a magic button, and then you just blow the opponent up. Mm -hmm. um, so the removal's something to do, but I mean, there, there was a turn when Orange earlier was just considering just blizzarding an empty board. They, they thought for the longest time about just doing nothing. Right. Then they thought, about, do I blizzard an empty board? Of course, this removal's not good enough. Yeah. Let's make some space. Um, they didn't do it. They did keep the removal. But in the end, all that removal didn't help them in the matchup because it turns out that bypassing a board of no minions with eight damage rag shots worked quite well. It's just crazy how, how often that in itself is a thing now. It's like, my hand is full. Do I need to play a card? Do I need to play a defile just to get it out of my hand? Right. Do I need to play a blizzard and stuff like that? So, yeah, um, full hands are a big thing in hearts. They always were in like freeze mage, but and maybe uh, say control warrior mirrors. Yep. But now it's happening more and more in more matchups. That first of all, you want to empty your hand because your opponent might have naturalized a lot of the time as well. Right. So many considerations. We see people overdrawing to activate their seven sevens in warlock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just I've, I've got ten cards. But let's press the button anyway because it does me two damage. I just, just really, I'm just trying to visualize this matchup that we've got coming up still, and it's. It's going to be tough for South Korea. It really is. And, and it's great to see, right? Because South Korea won their first two games of this series. That Turkey won the next game. If Turkey win this next game, we're going all the way to game five for the second series in a row. And let's be honest, this is what we want to see in the Hearthstone games. Of course. Games. I want to see lots of game fives, pressure on the players, pressure on the teams, chance for weird things to happen, like breakdown in communication. If one person panics and starts blurting a load of gibberish, like I do when I panic, which is all the time. Yeah, that sort of stuff can definitely ruin somebody's day. And then when that does happen, how does the team react to that person who maybe made a mistake? So the more chance of that to happen, definitely the better for me. Yeah, I know from my own teammate here on the desk that someone gibbering all day does ruin your uh, your day and your plan of action. <laughs> Makes me very happy. Or well, in situations like this, where the players are taking a while to get ready, it's actually very useful. It can be. So uh, I will give you that one. So... Last deck, it's interesting to me, let's just get the last picks. The last picks are going to be an interesting thing because they're the deck that you had to anticipate you were going to have to play. Mm -hmm. uh, Paladin and the Warrior is going to be. Seems odd to me, and that's not meant to be a pun, that Paladin <laughs> would be left until the end. Um, Feels like a powerful deck on ladder. Yeah, you're right. It was the last pick from Turkey and is the last deck to be played by Turkey. Um unlike South Korea, whose last pick was actually this mage that we're about to see. We're about to see it. We're seeing it. The game has begun. No Jaina. Mulligan disgust. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't have a, a counter to that. Um, so Let's talk about Berserski for a second. Mm -hmm. um, according to Fujitora, so I don't know how accurate this is, he is known as the master of BM. 
So Fujitora is calling somebody else the master, the of, master BM. of BM. Yeah. He's probably pretty good at BM then. Um, also... Either that or it is a BM, and like, Berserk is just the nicest guy ever. He's known for only playing aggro. Okay. The guy that's playing Quest sure. Warrior. Sure. Right Cheers now. for this, Fuji. I think you've got felt good here. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope this part is accurate. His name is actually pronounced Berserk G. That is correct, kind of. Um... I had this problem last year, so I actually went to his stream a couple of times. Says, "How on earth do I say your name?" And it is Berserk G, but Berserk G is kind of the bad Englishman who hasn't learned anyone else's language way of saying it. Okay. We're, we're all we're all in that category. Unfortunately, category, unfortunately, we are all in that category, so that's what you're going to have to listen to. The other um, language streams will be available. Yeah, indeed they will, where you can hear Berserk G's name said correctly. <laughs> But yeah, quest down, turn one, obviously it gets kept. We're not in a world in this matchup where that's even a consideration. Um, and yeah, Berserk G in a good position. He can just start plonking uh, these corner yeah, statues on the board. Yeah, uh, literally because there's no threat coming back the other way. Just get your quest done. We saw how that worked for Japan earlier. Just, just complete the quest as quickly as possible and start firing eight points of damage in before Jaina has a chance to get established. Obviously, if the warrior can run out of removal, if Jaina can have a couple of Elementals protecting her, then just getting the damage through is almost impossible. But turns out that's a lot harder to set up than just doing a load of taunts. So while we let the uh, the the start of this game happen, um, something, right. I, something I want to point out: you were talking about like the the pick and ban order and the mm -hmm. pick order a moment ago. Now we don't want to talk about the pick order of the second part too much because it shouldn't make much of a difference. However. I've noticed that in, in a lot of the games we have today, the teams have basically picked their classes, as in pick ban classes, in the same order that they've then chosen to play the classes. That's interesting. I'll we'll have to keep an eye on that one. With like one class flips or something. Right. Like, but, but like four out of five in the order that they So they're loading them. the top with their best decks in, is in that theory. Now that's where pick order actually might matter because if you can start predicting what your opponent's going to play, right. you can set up the correct matchups. I mean, that's, the, that's the George C school of thought, which is. If you randomize it, that's fine and all that and well and good. But I don't think you randomize it, so I'm right. not going to because I'm smarter than you are. Exactly. And that's basically George C's philosophy. It's like, yeah, if you randomize me, you can't outdo me, but you won't randomize because you think you're smart, but I know I'm smart. It, it's, it's these patterns like this that the teams are going to have to try and avoid entirely. Yeah, and again, with four of you, you should be able to discuss it and say, how do we avoid a pattern? The trouble is human brains are bad at avoiding patterns, so yeah. It can be interesting at times. Meanwhile, in the game in progress, obviously Turkey will be looking to do as much chip damage as possible. It is important. We've talked about doing the eights, but you know, if you can if you can get little bits through, you can reduce by an entire rack shot how much damage you need to do. That's very relevant. That can be a turn later in the game, a turn where your opponent may have to get a Jaina established that they wouldn't have if you were that bit quicker. So, watching the the cut and the thrust as to how Turkey try and chip away here is relevant to the game. Hmm. And again, seeing how South Korea managed their removal, we saw Orange and Co earlier die with a million removal spells in hand. Uh, the implication being that maybe you can just use them really frivolously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Turkey doing a great job of just put playing taunt after taunt after taunt at the moment. They are going to I run out one. sooner or later. They want one of those phantom militias that <laughs> Riffy has They would like one. His hand. I mean, Jane is just a quest you don't always draw. <laughs> and the tour of, yeah. quest is a quest you do always draw. Yeah, that's true. So choosing to save some removal, obviously nothing worth spending <laughs> cards on just there. And now Turkey likes to shield block just to try and get into their removal, but into their taunts, but they could just sort of throw in the blood razor. Doesn't seem relevant. In fact, this is an awful looking hand right now. Definitely the sort of hand that um, could go wrong. It could. It definitely could. It's not the fastest start. A matchup like this. It really isn't. 
And corner sentry ticks one up guaranteed now, but shield block. You can play shield block corner sentry next turn if you want, I guess, but then you've got nothing to do this turn. The, the numbers just don't work out well. So it looks like he's going to default to just advancing the quest with the cards in his hand. But it's the shield block pickups that are the problem here. You can play the corner sentry on any of the next few turns and not really waste mana. There'll always be a two mana slot available. Nice little grab. The problem on the other side is that uh, well, Rivius doesn't really have any card draw in his deck. So, as well as it being a quest that you don't always draw, there are no tools in the deck that allow you to draw this quest right. commas, faster. Yeah, and this, this is what I'm saying about being frivolous with the removal. Okay, it's, it's a one attack and a two attack minion, but you've really got nothing particularly better coming up for it, so don't take the three. That's a chain gang that they would have been able to play this turn if they'd shield blocked last turn. And then slot in the corner sentry the turn after. Still, Turkey do seem to be ahead of their opponents here at South Korea. Um, just because they are making so, progress to their win well, condition, yeah. South Korea are not. At all times, we have to imagine there is a Jaina in South Korea's hand and then evaluate from there, because sure. otherwise the game just ends. <laughs> a lot of the time, at least. Yep. Um, I guess every turn that Berserk G is not completing the quest is one turn closer Jaina could be to the top to of the do. deck. Interesting they're choosing not to play the Keysmith. Maybe they're looking for Counterspell and they don't want to play the Keysmith till after the coin has been used. Uh, personally, I quite like taking Ice Barrier in this matchup. It, it could be um, wanting the Counterspell immediately before Alana comes down. Right, and hopefully, hopefully the coin's gone. Yeah. That's a really good point. It's definitely a way they can win the game. Another reason to be using up those big spells. Battle Rage. Still not a great hand from Berserkchi, is it? So he's going to Blood Razor here and presumably attack with it as well to set up next turn's Ooh. Battle Rage on his Chain Gang with his, and with other stuff. With his 9 armor and 30 health, that's one less draw he's going to get from this Battle Rage. This is true. But you don't need a whole lot. You just need to keep it coming, I think. But like, There's a lot of Taunt Minions in here, so it's not like, say old school patron where sometimes you want to draw a whole bunch of your deck. You know, if you just keep drawing an extra card or two, the full on greed isn't necessarily needed here. Mm -hmm. All about progress towards getting the rag shot. There's really nothing else Berserkji can do with this turn. No, this is just literally playing into, into the next turn. This is what this turn was all yeah. about. It looks incredibly strange to look at, but with a battle rage in mind, that should explain a lot more. Doomsayer as South Korea picks up another yeah, useless And what does tool? South Korea think Turkey having their hand at this point? They must be able to eliminate so many cards just because of how the last two turns have gone. I wonder how close they can nail this deck, this hand down. Well, they knew that was important for a reason, so they just got rid of it. Yep. <laughs> There's the Keysmith, so let's take a look and see what they I do I like take. the barrier. I think just buys you an extra turn a lot of the time, yep. especially when your opponent's trying to chip you away. Counterspell, not an option here anyway. Just take Mana Binder to try and get two coins. <laughs> that might be entertaining later on. You can have a 12 mana turn. Right. Okay. Uh, Don't forget you're not paying for the Mana Binder. It's one of the choices anyway, yeah. And your opponent will test for Counterspell with a coin. Sure. Where's the second coin coming from? Oh, sorry, it's only one coin. So I've just frozen cloning <laughs> coins all over the place now. I blame Raven. So, uh, is an 11 mana turn even relevant in any way? Jaina plus ping, I yeah, guess? Yeah, I mean, that sounds relevant. That sounds important. Yeah. Get yourself two water elementals on one turn. But the problem is Berserk Bez G can play around it by just leaving no target on the board that just dies from a ping. He can, but then... Um, it's easy said, but often polymorphs and things the turn before set it up, and then you've got to kill your own minion with your own warpath. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can make your opponent do those sort of things, then okay. sure, you're playing around it, but you're also still hampering their game plan. Another turn. 
with no more towards Berserkji. Yeah, we're, we're concentrating a lot on the, the Jaina side of it here, but Berserkji is not able to generate his own board at the moment either. Not even going to play that sound just yet. I wonder what he's saving that for. Interesting. Maybe he thinks that if he plays the Sour Knight, then it just gets flame struck anyway. Oh, he's looking for a Sour Knight Warpath Battle Rage next turn. Oh, of course, of course. Seemingly to me. Korea, I think they'll probably want to play the Raven here to just thin their deck out. It's like a card I close to the Jaina, or half a card close to your Jaina if you pull it out. There's so much other stuff going on here. I mean, if Jaina is just not going to turn up, do you go for Cindergoza and try and just get the legendaries and win via different means? Your opponents aren't really uh, I mean, advancing the quest particularly quickly. I mean, legendaries can single-handedly win games. The problem is getting the correct legendary is the hard part. Like, sure, get two more Lich Kings, great. But uh, get two copies of Lynessa, not so great. If somebody was making decisions at a different speed to other people there, because they drew the card after blizzarding. <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they're generating some pressure. It's like, okay, if you're not going to complete your quest, we're going to make this board. And now, Berserk, you can either do it now, or you can wait one more turn and use a coin and trade it in for four cards. It's, yeah, it's so awkward right now, isn't it? Because Warpath deals one damage to all of these minions that have two health. What Double silence is no good because then it just get, does get flame struck away. However, double sound knight will help you to get towards completing this quest. There goes the mana bind finally. Berserk did look a little bit confused when that mana bind procked them. It's hard to tell, but yeah, a little confused. Just just checking from the nose up. Yeah. Here comes cards. Not the greatest. I must choose. Well, yeah, pretty grim, in fact. Still no taunts. That's good. Is it? No, it's not good. I'm just saying. you. No, I'm just being sarcastic. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm not used to you being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> just if it'd been subtle that said it, I'd have instantly understood what you meant. It's just amazing how little card draw there's been from both sides here. Neither player has drawn the tools that they actually need to win this game. Yeah, look at this gubbins on the board trying to have a fight. Go away, silly minions. We <laughs> want to start hitting each other for eight. These big, heavy control decks just killing each other with two twos? Mm, don't think so. It's a bit silly. Interesting that South Korea now can go for... Uh, it's taken so long for Turkey to do any damage. Things like getting a double armor smith in play and just gaining a ton of armor while you wait is going to be an option later on. And yeah, they're just going to go for single goes of things. Why not? The icy winds of Northland will consume your souls. It's oh, icy there winds of Nordland. <laughs> Finally, Phantom Militia gets drawn and can actually do some things. Problem is, he plays that. Again, he's got to think about Flame Strike, and then suddenly Cindergoza is hitting him. Well, Cindergoza is interesting here anyway, because those Nort ones just offer protection to Cindergoza to some extent. It's like, yeah, clear my board with Brawl or something later. Right. Thanks for the two legendaries. Yeah. Appreciate it. I, I, Turkey has to go with the Phantom Militia. They've here. got to complete the quest. It's got to be done. Yeah. And, and hey, if there is a Flame Strike, it's just 11 damage. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think that Turkey ever sticks much of a board ever again. No. And that's why these arming up options are going to become interesting here for Korea. Because it's okay trying to do sort of four or five to the face, but actually you can get 40 damage through, something like that. If your opponent starts getting much out of that range and they're chipping away at the same time, and eventually Jaina will actually turn up. Maybe. Now, although we've mentioned Flame Strike repeatedly, it hasn't actually been drawn by South Korea, which is sure. miraculous at this point. Um, he could play Dragon's Fury. Here comes the Flame Strike, most likely. 
<laughs> okay, there it is. I mean, there wasn't much left. We've seen both Dragon's Fury. We've seen it Blizzard. There's Meteor. Yeah. There's every chance of that happening there. But like I said, it was amazing that it hadn't been drawn already. But now, if Rivius wants to, he can play the Artificer plus Flame Strike for the seven extra armor as well. I wonder well. if he'll save the Artificer for double Artificer later or if he'll just go for the one. Uh, it's not a card you want to win a Brawl. I get, oh, yeah, that's true. But also, if you're running out of spells to play, maybe you haven't got time to wait for the double Artificer. So that was a decision. And he seems to be torn between the two there as well. I mean, I mean just in, in the pure case of armor, double Artificer plus one Flame Strike is the same as two separate Artificers and two separate Flame Strikes in, in terms of armor gain. Sure, but if they, if they both stick for yeah. multiple turns, gotcha. right? or if, if one sticks and the other's removed, that Wait, sort of thing. You, you can get an extra activation out of it sometimes. Which could happen after the uh, after the Sephiris has come down, after a lot of removal has already been what? used up. No. So Turkey have lost the board, well and truly. <laughs> Not getting that back. Do they have to double Warpath execute this? I think they do. I don't think they can... Well, they're about to lose all of their armor gain, right? right. They're about to lose the hero power, so they have to stop this aim <laughs> from connecting to, to the face repeatedly. Dropping the Acolyte just makes sense, because finally Turkey can draw some cards. Better late than never. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if it actually is that much better late than never. Okay, well, um, that's the Tyrantus, <laughs> and that's um, that changes things. Yeah, it tends to. Doesn't help against Brawl, which hasn't been drawn yet, but <laughs> can't be killed by anything else, so... Well, hey! Tyrantus versus 1-1 one, one Acolyte in a Brawl to the death. Coming at a cinema near you soon. <laughs> It'd be a really bad movie. Please just drop it. Please, please, just throw it. Yes! Two-turn lethal. There he goes. I'm going to love a natural 10-mana Tyrantus. Yep. Nope, that's not going to Nice meme. <laughs> to be fair, Sulfurus hitting into the Tyrantus and the hero power killing it. Will, it just will feels like it. one of the tests they give you at cast like, to school. But that goes half your health. What's the test? They just give you a Tyrantus, then instantly top deck execute and expect you to say they can execute the Tyrantus. Oh, right, okay. But we've done that question a million times. <laughs> We'd never make that mistake. Oh, this is really hard. Is, is it worth face tanking this damage to kill it? Um, as opposed to... Uh, as opposed to Sour Brawl now. I didn't have an... Uh, I think you've got to hit it, haven't you, with Sylphurus and Hope? Well, if so, I guess he hero powers first, sees where it goes, then makes the decision. Sure, yeah. See what you mean. I'm with you now. So the Brawl is... And if, if Berserk G loses the brawl, then Turkey lose the series. Yeah, this is what makes Hearthstone fascinating at high level, is the number of decisions you have to make that are not 100% and you just have to... Right. Oh, oh, time to... If my opponent has execute, I lose. He just works out the odds. And uh, there were the odds. And thankfully, Tyrantus was destroyed by that brawl. Uh, meaning that Berserk G still has a chance here. Oh, oh my God. The Tyrant has appeared. These are not good taunts. These are not good taunts at all. They are not the taunts you're looking for. They, they're perhaps three of the worst taunts in the entire game, actually. I wouldn't go that far. Huh? I your Nimsy taunt? <laughs> That's Stimsy, <laughs> on top of the Fen Creeper, isn't it? What? Isn't that the whole point? Maybe Is I'm completely wrong. Oh, wow, OK. Well, I learned something today. No, you probably learned that I'm wrong. That's usually the situation. We'll check it out later. I, well, I learned something today, either way. Shares and Seed isn't going to uh, proc that many times in a big spell mage deck, right? Because there are not that <laughs> many cheap cards. Then again, Just we're going to cast four of my blizzards in a turn. Well, we got Artifice, we got the coin, we got um, Polymorph as well, so it, it could happen once or twice. And Turkey are rapidly getting to the point where there's only like Garrosh and Sulfurus left as any sort of threat. They might need to get something for Stonehill, otherwise Korea just going to run them out of stuff. Still have that Artifice, still have Jaina to come. One of the brawls has gone, that's a big deal because it means that um, if Korea wants to go wide, again, it just protects from those rag shots. Not quite at that point yet. What now? Uh, 
I just think I just think Garrosh is really tempting this turn. Get it down and do something with yeah, it. Yeah, get it done cheaply. Before equipping the self heroes, do something with it. Yeah, your opponent's in a, a state where they're trying to exert pressure outside of their normal wing conditions. Slamming that, you know, shutting that down sooner rather than later seems like a good idea. They agree with you. It's not going to do anything after the self heroes gets played. At, at that point, playing Garrosh just loses you your wing condition forever. Yeah, I think they're hoping to um, at least look after it because of Alana later on. But. Yeah, you don't get to that point if you're not careful. Alana's going to have to be brawled or warpathed away. Oh. Revius just seems to have all of the tools in the world to deal with the, the tiny amounts of pressure that Turkey's putting down there at the moment. I mean, this is the exact stark contrast to what happened in the match earlier between Japan and Sweden, yeah. where the warrior just went, yeah, I'm going to make taunts or two taunts every single turn and start smacking you from turn seven onwards. Uh, we see now that this took so long for Turkey, they haven't even been able to get the board in a situation where it's worth playing the Still Furious, and we're on turn 15 or something like that. I mean, and, and that's amazing in, in itself, right? Like, Still Furious is almost the leftmost card in the hand at this point. Right. He's just not had a chance to play it. I think that Tyrantus made a big difference. Yeah, definitely so. Like we said, what, which legendaries could win the game for... Rivius. Well, yeah, Tarantus is one that we should have considered. Yeah, you get two goes at it as well. So, any, I mean, it's, it's basically when you're playing mage, you tend, again, general rule, but you tend to just want numbers from those minions. The card draw and stuff tends to be the stuff you don't want because they usually come up in the games where it's got a long time. You don't actually want to lose in fatigue. As it happens in this particular game, I think the card draw would be quite welcome. Time passes. Like Blood Mace Thanos and yep. like. Is actually going to use up this charge before dropping this Sulfurus. Uh, and actually, this turn's not too bad at all. Hitting the Doomsayer Hero Power to get rid of it, then equip this. Uh, oh, I make the trade, obviously. Then equip the Sulfurus, and then Hero Power again. That is eight to the face. It, it does start now. Yeah, I guess it has to. How long can Berserk G realistically wait before he starts blasting? No, I, I agree. The thing that's the problem for him is he's scared of Alana, right? There's been a lot of big spells played. And he hasn't thrown away a that's, that's, that, That'd be why they're considering for so long. But there we go. So Furious, Hero Power, let's go. Got to try win the game. <laughs> that is the objective. You said a while ago about um, they will play around Jaina Coin Pink. Jaina comes off the top here. <laughs> yep. No, you're right. <laughs> Imagine. It's just surprisingly hard to play around. Imagine if that set up with a mana bind work. Oh, but that's Alana! Do they believe? Uh, well, the sooner they play it, the less likely it is to be dealt with, right? Sort of, but with there only being seven cards in the deck, there's a decent chance that the, the answer's already there. So if you feel like you can bait out the, the other brawl anyway, then you do that first. And this is making good use of the Sheriff's and Seed, actually, and the Staggerdon. So um, yeah. this could easily fade out some form of removal. It, at the very least, it makes it difficult for Turkey to deal face damage this turn. Turkey slowly but surely are running out of resources. There's still healing in hand for Korea. There's more healing to come. There's still Jaina to turn up. And there's Alana to deal with. Meanwhile... There's a lot of damage coming in now the quest is finally being activated properly. How does Berserk G maneuver this turn though? Right. Uh, very carefully. He has shield block, shield slam to use at some point together. The, the problem is he probably doesn't really want to have to... Yeah, he's already using... He's going to have the arm for a while is what I'm trying to say. Very badly. It's never dealing more than five damage unless he played it with, with the shield block, with the armor that he already had, and shield yep. block. So uh, I don't mind the using it there. I guess now it's hero power, a bit, it's a minion, and then kill the other one. It's, it's really weird, actually, how the, the rag shots work. Like, you hit face the first time, and I agree with you, you didn't want it to hit face, but then if the next one hits face again, suddenly you're glad the first yeah. one did. Yeah, yeah. It works out really strangely sometimes like that. I, th and I think that turn, Berserk G just wanted to deal with everything Revius had without using any board clears. And no good way, really, for Korea to really hang in there for much longer here. They're trying to pace out their minions, so they're not playing too many in one go. 
And presumably there is somebody in each team as like deck checker person mm -hmm. who just sits there and doesn't speak and just ticks <laughs> off bits of the deck. I don't know how much these players like not speaking. Which ones? All of them? All or? of them. They're opinionated Hearthstone players. No. Yeah, I mean, I quite often just sit there and let the talk while I tick off decks. <laughs> okay. I don't think I've ever heard you just sit there and let someone else talk. Is that a dare? <laughs> Be careful not with right your now. answer. Not right now. Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> when, 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 when you're casting with, with Gaskin in a few weeks' time, you can do it. Sure. I'll win. Okay. Turkey finding ways to deal with the minions by using their own minions, basically, at this point. Um, and obviously, this minion pressure itself isn't going to get the job done, but it is going to help to deal with the opposing minions. Yeah. It's preventing Rivius from getting any of his own minion pressure, so Rivius is pretty much forced into playing Alana right now. Now, the interesting thing is here is that Turkey are the ones who forced them into that Alana. But they have no way of dealing with it. <laughs> and they have no way of dealing with it. And sometimes that's a mistake you can make in card games. I'm not saying it was a mistake necessarily because they needed to deal with minions on board other than Alana. But it is something that does come up from time to time. Just like, did you need to? Probably did. I mean, it's almost like they called Turkey's bluff, right? But, yeah, but Turkey forced them yeah. to. That's what I mean. Yeah, if yeah. you call their bluff, that's different. But if Turkey have made you call the bluff. Sure. I don't think this is quite that situation, but it is something that comes up from time to time. And now suddenly, completely distracted from hitting the face, they have to start dealing with this rapidly. This is just not a good situation to be in. I get, okay, okay, so Weapon can go into Alana herself. Minions can trade into one. Hero Power should deal with another one. Gonna see if we can draw... Okay, well, with only three cards left in the deck, yeah. there was a very high chance of drawing the Brawl. There it is. However... Now, once again, for the second game in a row, fatigue is going to become very important. Right. Also, with the brawls both gone, and a lot of the removal gone, and again, Korea will likely know every card left, they can make a strategy of putting down one minion a turn, for instance, that's going to survive, and maybe get to that Jaina. Yeah, one minion a turn, but eat up that Ragnaros hero power. But Voodoo Doll doesn't survive the Razor. Alana doesn't survive the Execute. So at least one more guaranteed shot is around and probably two more. Yeah, Doomsday is not actually that bad for that. Like, just plonk down Doomsday. Right. You're going to hero power. If it kills the Doomsayer, yeah, great, It's actually bad. Them. You just don't want to kill the Doomsayer, right? I'm so, of yeah, Berserk G only has a one in three to hit where he wants to go with his hero power. He may just drop Blood Razor, hit the Alana, and then he's got a 50-50, but... Um, Rivi is doing what he can to slow Turkey down. We are in these, we are in the stage of the game where fatigue's coming into it. And the terrifying part now here is you've even got to consider, at least at some level, do you want to execute the Doomsayer <laughs> that's going to blow up your opponent's board? Ha! All right, hang on. I'm going to check to see. So the Lich King is in Rivius's deck. Is Jaina in there? Uh, I hope so. I hope so too. Um, but the Lich King is something that Berserk G may want to consider holding that execute. Sure. I, I, I think this is the right play and Ouch. take the hit for the team, the Doomsayer. That's actually, the, yeah, that was the worst one because now Alana's still alive. Right, it's just an absolute nightmare that killing your opponent's thing that was going to blow up their own board is the worst thing for you, which is why it was such a good thing to play. Bangladesh would be great after Jaina. Yeah. They've actually got to start doing some numbers to see if it's great anyway. Rivius also has a second Keysmith in there at some point. I wonder if, if now they're going to consider going with the Ice Barrier. The problem there is yeah. that it's unlikely it's, yeah. it's going to do anything. They're never going to go face again. It's, it's more for the early stages when they're going through that chip damage. Out of cards. Right, that is everything as you can see yourselves. Can they force through three more shots to the face before Jaina turns up? Or possibly even the, the second artifice will buy enough time as well. Yeah. You don't have to have targets for flames, you just play it. There are a lot of good draws in uh, in South Korea. So even the Lich King is good for slowing Turkey down, getting a Death Knight card, doing something. It's going to be a struggle for Turkey to get there in time. Seven cards left for Rivius. But also... 
Vivius is going to be pretty low on health when he does get there. Job's done. So maybe they can execute the first water elemental and never play another minion. That's another thing if it gets that deep. I mean, they might just be dead in two turns yet. Bad draw. Bad draw. Bad. Not what South Korea wanted. And it, again, there aren't that many bad draws left in Rivia's I mean, deck. They're facing down at 12, so they've got to do something. They can't play Geddon with that in mind. Because the two would kill them. They've got to kill this 1-4, or the 1-4 will kill them. So it's a Flame Strike or Dragon's Fury, then? But you can ping your Voodoo Doll as well. Oh, OK. But no, you won't. But or maybe you will, actually, because maybe you want to do direct damage if your opponent tries to sneak down the Acolyte of Pain, if it ever comes to that. Also, um, there is the Phantom Militia there. And if uh, Rivius has been keeping track, he will know that. Mm. Didn't, you know, that's, that's from the deck. Yeah. So Flame Strike may be needed for that. So they need to save the Flame Strike. That Dragon's Fury is going to be pretty useless soon, if it's not already. I think it might be. Yes, yeah, it's, it's either got one blizzard left or nothing, I think. And also, you, you, you've got it in mind that you want to keep your expensive stuff for the artificers to some degree as well. So blizzard, but he's going to have to chain out four of the remaining cards. Okay, this, this makes much more sense than the stuff I was talking about, because you've now got a 50-50 of missing. <laughs> so, she's just going to close his eyes, press the button. Oh, yeah, you can just clear it up, obviously, but yeah. He could, yeah, but does he need to save that weapon charge for the execute? Nicely worked by Korea. Six cards left. Lich King, Artificer, Jaina, Keysmith. Blizzard. Pretty close to knowing them all. Some of them are good and some of them are bad. It's looking like about 50-50 to even continue the game. The coin has, of course, now gone, so all the, the silly plays we were talking about have ended. <laughs> what no. Chain of coin ping. If that's the silliest play the deck's got, then it needs a rework. If this one, if they do fire and hit the Voodoo doll, there's another one next turn. Okay. That's a really bad hit. Yeah, they're just back in the same situation next turn. Polymorph ping Voodoo doll is a thing that can be done. They know full well this Divine Shield like makes zero difference, <laughs> but I think all three options made zero difference. That's the Keysmith, another bad draw. Actually, wait, wait, wait. Is now Barrier... No. I mean, if it was good last turn, it's better this turn, right? Right, yeah. Need a key. Um, yeah. Sure, there's some cards. <laughs> Uh, mirror Entity gets you a minion. With Taunt. Yeah, Mirror... It gets you a minion, which is something your opponent can't deal with right now very easily. Yes. Explosive Runes is a little bit of burst damage. You're talking about a deck that's fatiguing, so it might change sure. the breakpoint, but I think Entity is the safe pick. I, mean, I doubt that Turkey play the Militia, but they might have to, to try and get through these annoying Keysmiths and Dolls that keep appearing. Right. But I don't think they need to. They know it will just die to the Foam Strike anyway. Hey, fire away. Yep. Oh, this time the weapon is going in. OK. Which means that execute is going to be pretty difficult to rock at any point. The Lich King yeah. gets drawn. That's now not. Oh, it's going to be a situation now where the Lich King, Lich King is drawn. It either kills your opponent or kills a Lich King. So. Oh, right. Okay. Well, here, by playing the two Phantom Militias, if South Korea plays the Flame Strike, they're dead to the hero power. Right. But thanks to the Mirror Entity, it's 50 50 again. Rivius wants to draw Artificer, I think, now. So he can Artificer Flame Strike this turn and, uh, you know, be guaranteed not dead the following turn. There's the Lich King, though. The Lich King. Does it do anything? Not this turn. That's another flame struggle. That's another seven armor potentially gone. This is amazing. So close to winning with damage though now. The fact this up. It's going to be a one in three for Berserky to just win this game. But like the fact is Geddon ping lethal next turn if this doesn't hit? They just took three. Let's see what happens here first. No. 
I don't think it was anyway, but... Just lost a 1-3 to win the game. Yeah, there's more of those. Alex Straza healing me. South Korea back up to 15. It now takes two hits again. Yeah, they're just going to win now, most likely. Th there isn't time. This reminds me of that Brazil game that you liked. <laughs> it's just over. There just isn't time. It's not possible. Five health left. He's dying to fatigue next turn. South Korea going to win this unfavored matchup and take the series against Turkey. Use of that voodoo doll there, keeping you back for the whole game for, for that sort of situation. Use of the Keysmith as well. Okay, they, they drew that later, but managed to keep one minion on board, reduce it to 50-50s, oh. reduce it to one in threes. He got the hit then as well. If not for the Alex Strauss, it, that, that would have been the hit that won the game the previous turn, but it's not good enough. Dak Rivius going to be celebrating with the rest of his team at South Korea. I'm sure Surrender will be thrilled when he finds out the news that they've won their first round of the Swiss. I'm sure he will too. Winning is fun. <laughs> Winning when you're not even there sounds like even more fun. It's more fun and flashy. I, I think we heard Sartre saying to Raven earlier. Well, it's flashy to win if you're not there. <laughs> no, it's just flashy. Okay. Flashier than making flashy plays. Okay. Yeah, winning does seem pretty cool. Seems like a um, Turkey there, uh, right from the start, we're up against it there. I think we'll have a look at how that worked out now. And you can see right from the start, it just didn't look like they had the matchups they wanted to win this. I feel like that Paladin deck was going to get stranded yes. even in game five a lot of the time. We didn't like, want to talk about this too much because we didn't want to ruin the moment for later on if that match did come up. But we're talking almost impossible for Fuji Taurus to win.